Whether you call it Kveik, Kvik, or Kvike, there's no denying that this unique Norwegian yeast has had a remarkable impact on the brewing scene, and Imperial Yeast's A43 Loki is one of the best versions out there. With the ability to produce a clean beer when fermented as warm as 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, you heard that right. While also performing well at more standard ale temperatures, Imperial Yeast A43 Loki is as versatile as it gets, meaning you have zero excuses for failing to brew throughout the year. Learn more about A43 Loki at imperialyeast.com and grab a pouch for your next batch to see what all the fuss is about. Hey everybody, this is the Brewlosophy Podcast. I'm your host, Marshall Schott, and I know it's been way too long since our last listener submitted beer review episode. In fact, we haven't done a single one in 2023. Why is that? Really, it's a few reasons. One being that we all live normal lives, which can make coordinating time to review the beers together a bit difficult. But thankfully, we're finally getting at it. However, this one's going to be a little bit different as Tim's wife, Michelle, and my wife, Laura, are being replaced by a couple of voices that you're probably familiar with, Justin. What's up, beer fam? Craig? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> That's Fat Albert. That's not, that's not Craig. That's Fat hey, Craig. Hey, that's hey, Fat hey. Craig. That was mean. <laughs> I wasn't judging you, but I'm secretly judging you. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, uh, I'm not sure what the future holds for this series as we've been having a lot of fun with the average brew review episodes, which are a quarterly thing. So you're going to get four of those anyways. And, uh, you know, if people want to keep sending us their beer, I guess we'll keep doing these review episodes. Please do. I need to be employed. (laughs) Yeah, this is your employment. You're going to have to file unemployment soon, I think. But that's a joke. I'm not firing you guys, I promise you. Uh, But yeah, if you want to keep sending us your beer, uh, let us know what you think about these listener submitted beer review episodes uh, and how you would like for them to go. That's the kind of stuff we rely on to determine how we're going to approach things. Uh, In keeping with tradition, I'm going to be pouring these beers and serving them to you guys blind, which just means... It doesn't mean you can't see, which just <laughs> which just means you're not going to know who sent them in, what the beer style is. You're not going to know anything about these beers, which that kind of by when I say in keeping with tradition, that was the original idea behind the one minute beer review with Jersey and Tim. Oh, Jersey, we miss you so much. I know you're probably listening to this. We're going to make you listen to it anyway. Jersey Bird. Jersey uh, Bird. We we miss you. It's a lot of fun doing it this new way that we're doing it. And we're not having the one minute beer review in every episode. But uh, it all started with that one day at your pool. When we yeah. when we were quote reviewing beers and I <laughs> the idea struck me. So how are you guys feeling about what we're going to do today? I'm Let's excited. Let's get after it. Get we're going to get after. We're going to do it. We're going to get it good. It. I know. I like how two of you are checking your your Facebooks right now. Uh, I love reviewing re- reviewing beers with you guys. You know that, especially when they're made by homebrewers. And I really couldn't care less if they're excellent beers or they're horrible beers. What I love is the fact that people invested the time and the effort to send us these beers. The reason I say that is because we are going to be honest in our in our uh, review of these beers. If we don't like them, we're going to say we don't like them. That's one of the disclaimers that I give to people mm-hmm. every time they message me or email me asking if they can send me beer. And I get a lot of these emails. We want to be honest. and we, we have to maintain the integrity of this show. Well, yeah. Brulosophy is known for nothing but integrity. That's something <laughs> our that word I'm is very our proud of. I, I'm not joking about that. We are very honest. We don't lie about anything. That's one of the things behind the philosophy part of Brulosophy. But we're, we're also not dicks. So we're, we're no. going to try to be nice about it. You know, we understand that preference is subjective, that there's going to be aspects of these beers that one of us might not like and another does. But that's what makes this fun. So... Uh, that is where we're at. We're going to be reviewing a lot of beers today. So we, if we if it feels like we're going a little fast or we start slurring our speech a little bit, please it have happens. please have a heart. Uh, we've and we've already had a couple of Miller Lights. We it's it's hot. It's summertime. We've jumped in the pool, had a couple of beers. So we got this thing started uh, on a good mm. on a good note. Uh, all right. If you like what we're up to and you want us to keep doing it, consider becoming a patron of Brewlosophy by committing to a small monthly pledge over at Patreon.com/slash Brewlosophy. 
You'll receive rewards like access to unpublished recipes, unique discounts at yakimavalleyhops.com, and an invitation to our monthly live Q&A session with somebody in the brewing world. Our guest for this month, September 2023, is world-renowned author, podcast host, and brewery consultant, a man I've had the pleasure of calling friend for the better part of the last decade. John Palmer will be making his return to the Patreon monthly Q&A live cast stage. That's right. John was, the, uh, I believe, our first guest back when we started our Patreon in early 2018, over five years ago, and he's coming back to kick it with our supporters. If you're brewing today, chances are some of what you do has been influenced in part by John Palmer. This is going to be a great one. If you want to be a part of this session, you have to make your pledge at patreon.com slash brewlosophy by Friday, September 29th, 2022, as John will be taking questions on Saturday the 30th. All past sessions are available on our private Patreon and Facebook pages, so you can go back and watch them whenever you like. Learn more about becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash brewlosophy. Another really easy way to help us out is by using the links found at brewlosophy.com slash support. When you're shopping online, your experience will not change at all, and we get a little kickback for the referral. Free money, never a bad thing, right? Finally, if you wouldn't mind letting us know what you think about this show by leaving a rating and review an Apple podcast or wherever it is you listen to podcasts, we'd appreciate that as well. Feedback is brought to you by Clawhammer Supply, who in addition to having a badass YouTube channel chock full of great brewing related content, and I mean it when I say that, they sell what we believe to be some of the best electric brewing systems on the market. If you've been considering making the move from propane to electric, you owe it to yourself to check out Clawhammer Supply, whether you're after a 120 volt five gallon unit or something bigger, like their powerful 240 volt 10 gallon system, Clawhammer has got you covered. Learn more about everything they have to offer at clawhammersupply.com. And don't forget to check out their YouTube channel as well. All right, listener Adrian Boley, whose uh, feedback on unique, I had some, he wrote in with some feedback on unique ideas for making NA beers, which are non alcohol beers. What? I, yeah, I see a lot of confused faces in here right what? now. What? I'm sorry, wait, are we drinking water? I, hear me out. It is a very, very popular trend right now in brewing. A lot, you know, people are trying to watch their alcohol intake. They're trying to watch their weight. They're trying Why? to be healthy. I don't get it either, bro. <laughs> I've, I've, you know, I totally understand. But he, we had an episode where we talked about non-alcohol beers, and he wrote in with some feedback after listening to that. Uh, Adrian said, thank you for airing my comment on non-alcoholic brewing using the party guile method. It reminded me to give you my update on party guiling my hazy IPA. Craig, I know you love hazy IPA. As you might have guessed, the non-alcoholic version was disgusting. (laughs) All the oat and wheat gave it a slick, slimy mouthfeel. It was like drinking a slimy hop water. I think I'm going to stop trying to blur the line between beer and hop water and brew beer and make hop water for a non-alcoholic option. Hop water is easier and faster, and I got a recipe everyone seems to like. So... This non-alcoholic beer thing is is very popular right now, and I, I I actually do appreciate it. I understand that you know for a lot of people, alcohol is a vice. It's a thing that kind of gets them into trouble. It may not be healthy for them, or they just can't drink it all together. But what I've been saying is that rather th- I don't I love beer because of what it is. I don't need it without the booze. I, it's not like I'm fiending for beer, right? If I if I don't have it in front of me, I don't drink beer every day, anyways. As it is, I'm fine drinking sparkling water. I'm fine having regular water, whatever. <laughs> the the big argument is, oh, you can drink this non-alcoholic beer when you don't feel like having alcohol. I don't need the calories either. <laughs> I'm fine just drinking water, right? I get the argument though that people who just don't want alcohol at all are really happy to have a non-alcoholic version. Well, in making those non-alcoholic beers, there have come quite a few different methods for doing that. And what Adrian had proposed was doing a party guile, which means taking the first runnings from your mash. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Nope. It's the first part of your mash. It's the first It's the first collection of the wort that becomes beer, right? That comes from your mash. But then using those spent grains that already released most of their sugars and then collecting a second set of wort, a second volume of wort, much lower amount of sugar in it, and fermenting it like normal, but it's so low in sugar that you're really only getting about a half a percent of alcohol in it in the end. Sounds like a lot of work to be sober. Yeah. It's Well, yeah. it's a good point. I hadn't thought of it that way. It's also very not... It's not much more work in the end. If but you're, hey, I get it. The mocktail craze and, and people trying to yeah, yeah. dial that in. I get it. I yeah. mean, hey, if you have a problem... 
you know, good for you to recognize that and take the steps that you got to do to, to yeah. correct that. No, no, no one is judging anybody for that. We, we appreciate that. I just, my thing is like, I'd rather drink sparkling water anyways. I'd rather like, have I, a diet Pepsi than a... You, you yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm not sure what to say to Adrian other than um, I, that's kind of what I would have expected, that it wouldn't have tasted very good. Uh, you know, you've all heard, I just spoke about it again, my take on non-alcoholic beer. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. Um, but yeah, yeah, it sounds, that makes sense to me that, that, you know, using a bunch of oats or any other type of, uh, you know, malted grain that's not barley, uh, would result in that kind of slick, slimy character. And that just sounds awful to me. So, but I guarantee that there's going to be, you know, probably athletic brewing or something like that is going to be making you are... Justin going to make this very difficult, but I guarantee you that there's going to be some companies out there who make very good analogs of hazy IPA that have no alcohol in them and, and kudos more, more power. Exactly. More power to you. If that's the way you're doing it. So. If it gets more people into the industry and tag and, you know, and having conversations, get after it. in this day and age, that's kind of what we need, right? So. Maybe it's going to be more patrons yeah. to the brew philosophy. <laughs> We need that. <laughs> yeah, we need that. So anyways, thank you for the feedback, Adrian. We always appreciate updates on prior feedback. If you have show feedback, you can send it to feedback at brewlosophy.com or drop us a line on social media. All righty. When we get back from this break, we're going to be digging into some listener submitted beers. Chilling work can be a chore, especially after a long brew day, but not with the Exchillerator Counterflow Chiller, which can chill a 5-gallon or 19-liter batch of wort in 5 minutes or less, leading to a strong cold break and clearer wort in the fermenter. Brewlosophy's Matt Del Fiaco uses the Exchillerator Max and absolutely loves it. In addition to improved chilling efficiency, every Exchillerator comes with a 5-year warranty that covers the entire chiller for manufacturer defects. If you're looking to up your chilling game and a CFC is right for you, head over to Exchillerator.com today. There's no denying that stainless steel is the best material for brewing equipment, and Delta Brewing Systems offers some of the lowest prices on high-quality stainless gear, like the Firm Tank, which in addition to holding 8 gallons or 30 liters of work, comes with a domed lid to even further reduce the chances of a messy blow-off. Plus, it can hold up to 4 PSI of pressure for closed transfers. Delta Brewing Systems also has their own line of brew kettles as well as one of the lowest-priced all-in-one electric brewing systems out there, and their prices are shockingly low. If you're in the market for legit stainless gear that won't break the bank, do yourself a favor and head over to DeltaBrewingSystems.com today. I can honestly say that considering how long it's been since the last time we did one of these review episodes, I'm legitimately excited to get into these beers. But before we do that, I just want to be very transparent. Some of the beers that we're going to be drinking today were sent to me quite a long time ago. Not, you know, not too bad, less than half a year or so, but between Dang. four, like four or five, maybe six months ago. Um, now, I always make sure to store beers immediately in my fridge as soon as I get them. That's not the issue, but age is age. And I want to apologize to the people who have been waiting to hear us review their beers for so long. That's my bad. We've just struggled to find a time to come together. We, there were other issues that came up. So we're, we are finally getting to it now, and I'm happy about that. Now, we're not going to lie. Our impressions of any of these beers are going to be our honest thoughts. But like I said earlier, we're going to take into account the fact that we know that maybe there's some age on them. What, what, what's cool is that we have a couple of these styles, stylistically speaking, a couple of the beers that were sent to us are styles that actually do well with a little bit of little age, age on yeah. them. So we have nothing to worry about there. But again, I do apologize. I know it's been a little long. And for those of you who put the effort into sending us these beers five months ago, I do apologize. They have been treated very, very well. So let's get into the first beer. This first one comes from Ben, who uh, who in addition to... Have, they sent us one of their... I think it's Ben Gansmer. Uh, sent yeah, us, see that guy that we were doing that one day when we did the uh, Saison? The Saison, yeah. That one day. He sent yeah, us yeah. the average brew Saison, uh, and he sent me a whole write-up on that one, but it, we liked his Saison quite a bit, if I recall correctly. He says that uh, the other bag of beers... I'm not... I, th- this is going to be blind, but, I, but I'm trying to not talk too much about the actual beer, but he said he sent us a couple of extra things, one of which we're going to get into in a minute, but the first one is this one. And so okay. I want to hear what you guys have. So this one, by the way, is not old. This one this one did come to us in the last week. Great color. 
Yeah, it looks nice. Maybe Pretty. three weeks or so, but yeah. Good color, good smell. Ooh. Oh, smells like a good sour. You guys smell? I love that smell. I got, oh, God. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Please tell us what you're experiencing, Hello, Justin. My, uh, my poop oh, shoot just turned inside yeah. out. That's good, dude. That is sour and is. good. Very sour, but it's good. Oh, it's, it's a, so good. Yeah. Oh, it's puckery. So sour is my favorite style of beer. Not mine. And this is... Not mine. Ooh. Well, you're a porter guy, so yeah. you're kind of flawed in this. I like chewy. But man, that is acidic. Ooh, that'll make you pucker. Yeah, yeah this, that'll, that'll clean your concrete. That, <laughs> So this one is uh, from Ben Gansmer, and That's he good, said, though. it's it's funny, in his note on is this Is he the one, hockey family? I don't, like don't know. But he says, feel free to share these beers with friends if you'd like. So I'm not sure he expected these to be reviewed like this. Ben, this beer is ben. surprisingly... Tim, he, he did a... This is great. What, what Boy, do you... Um, I'm getting that tingle in the what back do you get of your jowls. What, what's that? Getting that tingle in the back oh, of yeah, your jowls. It, it My flavor jets right are on. There. It's good. <laughs> it is... Um, it is, oh, wow, <laughs> it's notably tart. Yeah. yeah. It is. I like it. It is like you were like sucking on that sugar at the bottom of a Sour Patch Kids wow. package. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to read. Is that the citric acid? <laughs> it's lactic acid. Same thing. Yeah. That's, I what, mean, he, that, that's what he meant. Yeah. Same the rules. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to read a little bit about this beer. Do you guys, you guys obviously, it's a sour beer. Yeah. You understand that. Uh, what do you, are there any characteristics you get from it? That really stand out, other than that that tart character, Sour Patch Kids. Yep. Honestly, it's hard to to identify anything specific for me personally past that sour because it is just yeah, it is a punch right it's in the old biter. flavor jets. An old bite. That's good. Yeah, it's really I good. I, I can't even <laughs> explain what it tastes like, but yeah, is it kind of basic? Just a basic sour? Yeah. That's what I get too. Yeah. yeah. So it's very very like maybe tart, apricot. Like, yeah, I feel like a lot of sour beers have a kind of stone fruit, you know, apricot, peachy undertone yeah. to them um, a, for whatever reason. Uh, this is a very interesting beer. You guys aren't going to find what I'm going to read now from Ben very interesting, but I think some of our listeners Figures. will. I don't mean to. Actually, maybe you'll find it fascinating. Who knows? Most likely uh, not. But he, he shares his grain <laughs> bill. He shares what he, he hopped it with. But he said, my main reason for sending this one is to provide an example in contrast to what you said on the recent Quick Sour Methods Experience episode uh, that we did an episode with um, with Jordan Folks a while back talking about quick souring methods. And this was made using... A one of the quick souring methods that we that we talked about. He says in the episode, you said your experience was that beers made with Philly sour or sour VCA, those are two different yeast strains, uh, haven't been all that sour. He says that's been my experience with Philly sour, but not sour VCA. This is the first beer I've made with it, and it's sour, too sour in my opinion. I recently added some mango to it to see if the sweetness from the fruit could help balance the sourness. Nope. This does not taste like a yeast produced lactic acid sour beer. This tastes no. like it was hit with sa- like a, a souring bacteria, like a lactobacillus bacteria. It, it is sour. That's what I was That's what say. I, Yeah. I was like, man, lactic bacillus. This guy hit with something. <laughs> Saskatchewan. <laughs> well, well, Craig had to give his to you because yeah, he's going to drink it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. What do you like about it, Tim? It's just, it's just good. It's clean and. I mean, I, I can't describe the taste really. It, it's just so soury tasting. This is like sucking on a raw lemon. I don't get an aroma, but that's nothing uncommon for me. Yeah, yeah this I, is uh, this is good. But yeah, on a, on a scale of like one to ten, ten being pungent, pungent, it makes sour. This is this is a nine, nine. Yeah, eight. it makes you pucker. That's for sure. I'd like it maybe at a eight. This is this is stiff. Yeah, but man, I, I finished it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Uh, in the in you know I don't make very many sour beers, but in that world of sour beers, it's very common to make. You're not supposed to look at the labels. You're supposed Sorry. to be blind to these. Uh, it's not uncommon to make a base sour beer that you then use for various other like, you know, you add mango to one like Ben did, or or maybe you blend it with another more funky beer to create something new. This to me seems like a really good. Uh, a way to like a, a beer that would be good as a base like that. So. Yeah, the fundamentals are absolutely there. Yeah. So, all right. Ben it's sent good. us another bottle of beer. Yes, he did. Ben's coming in hard. It looks a little different than the last one in the glass. What's it, it look like? Yeah, it, it looks, looks like amazing. a cup of coffee. Yeah. 
It's very dark. Yeah, it's a, clearly a Stout or a Porter, so we're not going to pretend that it's not. Or maybe, maybe it's a Schwartz. Oh, knows. Lord. Oh, maybe it's a Hell's. Oh, that's let, good. Let's go. Tell uh-oh, me. Uh-oh, Greg's uh-oh. on fire. Hold on, hold on. Do you know what Hellas means? No. If I'm not mistaken, it means light. <laughs> yeah, this is this is totally the opposite of that. Like I said. Schwa- Schwartz. non it, it's, it's non-Hellas. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is Hellas dark. <laughs> this is Hellas dark. <laughs> <laughs> the color is beautiful. Mm, it's tasty. What do you get? I want to hear. I want to hear your review. Oh. He's making Ooh. love to it. Ooh, Ooh a little it coffee. So good. Little, I can't smell anything. Boy, that is mm. chocolatey. Got, that oh. is my alley right there. Yeah, this is this is Craig and Willy Wonka got down mm. in. Oh my! Goodness. Right. Goodness Look in my eyes, Marshall. Look in my eyes. That's this guy can only do it for so long <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah, before I get really uncomfortable. Uh, You're welcome. What do you get? What do you get, Timmy? Mm. Well, it's it's, it's, a, it's a dark. Ooh, this is like a roasty bowl of quick it's, yeah, oats. Yeah, it's roast. See, that's the crazy part. How he loves the sour, and I love this, and yeah. the opposite flips. And, and you guys are like, like, you're like two mm, sour patch kids. Right? It's good. First, yeah, you're sweet, it's not then you're me, sour. Though. It's so good. It's so good. I love this. I love the body. Yeah, from, I love the color. So I, love I the, don't mm. like these types of beers, but from heavy. just a pure like brewing standpoint, you could tell he knows what he's doing. Yeah, okay. he does for sure. Yeah. yeah, Ben. Ben was one of the few, one of the first guys in the uh, the brew club who was <laughs> a shoot and a miss. <laughs> wow, <laughs> there's beer all over. That the just happened. House I there, remember whatever. my first here, right here, beer. Ben. Just grab this towel. Uh, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, Ben was one of the first guys who was in the brew club who was posting all these wins and competitions. So clearly he knows what's up. Uh, this is going to be a surprising one. Tim, have a look at that label. Does it, Tell me if it looks familiar to you. Eh? Nope. Craig, you were there too. <laughs> right, yeah. Justin, no, you were there too, dude. Yeah, he sent in when we were doing those, uh, I think it was the, the oat oatmeal stouts. stouts. That's what the average yep. brew stouts. Absolutely. Yeah. So, he Boom. sent us, we had made a comment, he had said something, I believe, in his note for the Oatmeal Stout episode uh, about how he's going to set some aside or age them or whatever, and we said, oh, that'd be great to try. So, he sent another one in for the average yeah. brew thing, but he just for us to sample. God, and Those beers are a 10-1. Yeah, one. it does say it. Yeah, it's strong. Oatmeal stout. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'll, that'll put you on your back. Yeah, you don't, it's almost like, like in the, the, yurt? the mead, I mean. Is it's, amazing. Did you say it's almost like mead? Yeah, mead. Hand me the water, please. I'm gonna rinse what are my we glass. In third grade. I I love this beer. Yeah, yeah. I love like it. I said, from from a, a just a, a pure follow the rule standpoint, you know that that was good. And actually, I I remember seeing this one, and this was one of the better beers that we had. If you guys recall when we did that, I episode. do remember that. Yeah, it was. It is. It is it's gotten better. I, I feel like, and this is what I mean. It's funny that this is one of the ones that's. That's ten point one. That's ten point one ABV. Yeah, yeah. That's a, oh. I'm when, glad when you, we're not doing all when, imperial stuff. When you get into God, those uh, those malt, um, what are they? Barley wines and stuff like that. What are those? But uh, about ten to twelve. You know, okay. it's you know. So this is light your world on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are these are you don't care if you get into a fight beers basically, right? Got it. Yeah. Jersey. <clears throat> yeah, no, no joke. All right, we will move on to the next one. Uh, while we're passing around the bottle, there's another one in there, Justin. If don't you wanna, look at the bottles, guys. While they're passing it around, I'll, I'll hand Tim mine, okay. and then you can hand. Am I supposed to open these with my? Shirt I know. Wheel? I should. I'm, this is so unprofessional. I should get a, a second church key, but times are tight. Do we all got to watch our money? Oh, this is so pretty. I'm curious what you guys. All right, think. Craig, take a peek while I pour that out. Here you go, Timmy. Ooh, we. That's pretty. This that looks is good. pretty. Don't, don't look at the label. So I'm not reading this one. I will say comes from Brent oh, Langdon. That looks good. Of Cascade Brewers, uh, Cascades Brewers, I believe. Uh, it's a homebrew club. I believe it's out of Oregon. It might be out of Washington State, but Cascades Brewers, Brent Langdon. I'm not yeah, saying like, a thing about it. What color is it, Tim? It's reddish. Oh, yeah, it's, it's reddish. Yeah. Does that give you any idea what style of beer it might be? Oh, uh, this is one of them reds. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> no. It is from um. What's that? The that real f- normal beer? Uh, Killian's Irish Red. 
Yeah, so this bam. looks like similar to that color. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's clearly what Brent was going for. I know this because I have the notes Ooh, in front wow, of me. Wow, that's pretty. Oh, that's it's helpful gorgeous. to have the notes yeah. in front of you. Yeah, L- look at it in the sun. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, good head. I mean, just a beautiful caramel so red. I have a question. What color would you just? Des- how would you describe the color of the foam on this beer? Oh, son of a monkey! Mm. Color oh. of the foam. God. So that's a thing people do is we, you know, you describe the color of the foam. I, I have my. But I'm Creamy? Cu- <laughs> that's not a color. Yeah. <laughs> is this your oh, first day on the cool job? Cool vanilla? <laughs> Durr. Is, is yeah, this is, this is definitely an, like an off whitish gray. Yeah I, yeah, I don't get, I get tan. I mean, it looks tan to me. Mm. Beige uh, maybe is beige. Oh, I can see that. Well, Beautiful yeah. beige. But it's, it's gorgeous. So you got a nice, very red beer. Yeah. Uh, These are. This is one of my favorite styles of beers. Is the, is the red? Do, really? Yeah. No. So, dude, seriously. So Killian's so seri- uh, sours and then followed yeah, very yeah. closely by these. I love it too. Uh, I, I'll read to you more about this once you guys start reviewing it a little bit. But I will say this: Killian's Irish Red is actually, if if I'm not mistaken, it's a red lager, which is just as delicious in my opinion. But this, I like this better. Is more likely an ale. I'm not going to give anything away. But what do you guys think? Smell, taste, mouthfeel, it's, all that. It fun smells stuff. like a little roasty. Yeah, sure a little does. roasty, that's toasty. What I get. Yeah. And and I can never smell any of it. So oh, that, that it smells out. really good though. It does it, smell it really is good. Like yeah. very inviting. Is the yes. yeah? Please drink me, man. This is so tasty. It has mm. has good. The, oh. co- the color throws you off though. I'm getting like. That Speak for yourself. It to me, it's like come. Drink oh yeah, no, I agree. Me. But the color, you're like, oh, it's going to be a little thicker. I but get yeah. a little yeah, taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. refreshing. Metallic. You get that whenever it, whenever it's a light, it's it's a lighter beer that has roasted malt in it. I've realized that Tim mm. is that you perceive that ro- the roasted malt character when it's not in a stout or a porter, basically. Uh. Sometimes in porter, actually, you'll you'll say it's the metallic thing, and I I wonder if it's not some association that your mind makes with like. That burnt kind of toasted character. I do yeah. not get metallic. It's like this. juniper after a wildfire. <laughs> is, is it the uh, silver crowns in your mouth? <laughs> it it might be. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's having a, a chemical reaction. <laughs> so what was the metal they used back in the forties? When he mercury, <laughs> he got his oh, mouthful of mercury. Mouth full of mercury. <laughs> 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 it's a big step up from the wooden oh, teeth he had. He's the original uh, originator of the grill. Oh, Rob the Jubilee store oh, and make me look, a grill. This beer this is, is so, so good. So dude. good. This is yeah, this it's is very good. smooth too. It's so creamy dude, and just smooth. Buttery and, good. Oh, it's so mm. good. And I love Brent, I love your recipe. He keeps it simple. So I, you guys want me to tell you more about it now? No, 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 no don't, don't, I, I don't, don't want to hear it. it. Don't do it. You just want to leave it alone. Do it. <laughs> do it. If I know, it'll ruin it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a vision of the malt he used. And if you tell me otherwise, I'm going to hate it. I'm going to hate myself yeah, in the yeah. morning. Actually, Justin whispered to me, it's golden promise, isn't it? No, mm-hmm. you're wrong. Yeah. Uh, so Brent says, uh, Imperial was Imperial yeast was nice enough to send me a pack of Imperial darkness as part of the average brew oatmeal stout. But I didn't get around to brewing my oatmeal stout. Instead, I put the pack to use with this. Irish Red Ale. Boom! This batch was a full-size five-gallon, that's 19-liter batch, but given the low gravity, I was able to brew it all grain on my stove using my five-gallon kettle. I have to believe he has a gas stove because electrically, that'd be very difficult. Uh, He said, I brewed a higher gravity three-and-a-half-gallon wort. Well, that explains it. Uh, That I topped up with two gallons in the fermenter. Uh, I tend to think that the best Irish reds are simple grain bills with just a touch of roasted barley to give a red hue and just a hint of roast. And I feel that's exactly what we're getting. Simple is better. Yeah, I agree. This one came in just a tad darker than I would like, but I am pretty happy with how it turned out. You should be. He used just Maris Otter, uh, 91% Maris Otter. That's good. Phenomenal uh, base grain for any ale. You could use it for a, a West Coast IPA, and it'd be great, in my opinion. Uh, he used 7% Crystal 40 and then 2% Roasted Barley. So Roasted Barley is a very dark... It's You've seen it in my garage. It's the ones that look black. Mm. Uh, and it and it is a it, you know imparts kind of a coffee like character, but at two percent you get this beautiful color with just a with just a hint of that roasted coffee thing, but not it doesn't overwhelm oh, the rest man. of the stuff. If it's Starbucks so started selling this, it, it'd be a 
triple multi-billion oh, quad, you know quadzillion. Uh, we, just talk, so we good. talk about pool beers. I, I call this like a campfire beer. Yeah. There you go. That's a, that's a good deal. Right? Yeah, that's that, that, that's that, getting on that Blackstone Grill after right. a pile of pasta and some salmon. Salmon. Mm, <laughs> salmon. Oh, man. <laughs> some and, then, salmonel. and then you sit around and drink these until you pee your shoes. Yes. Be, uh, Brent says that he hit it with uh, 1.9 ounces that's about fifty-five grams, if I'm if I'm calculating correctly, of East Kent Goldings EKG, uh, just enough to get twenty-four IBU at thirty minutes into the boil. So so only a thirty-minute boil. I don't know if he boiled it for thirty minutes or what, but and then he fermented it with Imperial Yeast Darkness. I think that's a ten, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely phenomenal beer, phenomenal yeast to ferment it. Uh, ten forty-six to ten thirteen. So, wh- would you guys like to guess the ABV of this beer? Nine point two. Uh, 8.1. 9.2, really? That's really high. I'm just teasing. <laughs> what, what do you think it is, Tim? You tend to be it's, pretty good at this. 4.3. I think right on the 5-ish. Five 5-ish? Five yeah. You're not too far off. It's more like 4-ish. Right. 4? 4.3%. It seems wow. really stronger than that. There's way too much flavor for it to be a 4. That you That's that's a big issue with right. low ABV yeah. beers. Is they, they taste watery. They're, they're just kind oh, of... This is a strong beer that could hold its own in a bar yeah. fight. It's super duper good. Brent, you did a phenomenal job. Would you would would you would you order one in a, in I a pub? I would drink the hell out I of sure this. I sure wouldn't order I would one. I'd order a half a dozen. Yeah, yeah so... All right, we're going to move on to the next beer here. I believe they sent two, uh, or is there just one? Just one. All right, just one beer. So we're going to have. It's okay. Don't read the. Don't read the label. But trust me, we're not going to need two bottles of this one. Here, I'll take. I'll take the first dip. And oh, oh, oh that's another. That is, that's <laughs> a dark. Oh, that is like Labrea Mama. tar. Pits. What would you say the color of that foam is? Beautiful. That is that is deep a t- space. yet again not a color but yes <laughs> <laughs> deep Craig, space that Craig, is like that's definitely tan Craig never his mom's like yellow he's like sunshine <laughs> I do color for a living so these are my own colors you do do color do do I Greg do do you do color is, for a living that's oh. true this is like we just poured out pins oil wow. forty weight whoa, that is whoa, what whoa. it looks like oh you're right Justin I whoa. felt like when I was pouring this I felt thickness coming out of the oh my bottle, God. the bottle was heavy we're gonna leave that alone Craig okay oh. the uh this is this is something else mm. I can't wait oh. for Tim's review on this one all right I want to hear what Craig has to say about it what's it I want to hear what you think of the uh, of the nose. the The aroma on this is something else. The nose is a um, <laughs> little fruity, very fruity. Very That's like, what I get too, like funky prune. I got, yeah, no, I get oh, the, prune. I, I get prune. I get yeah. Do you get the funky part? No, the prunish. Okay. Oh my prune. god! It's like a. It just got. And be I like prune. Wine. So I mean, you're close. This is chocolatey, little cherry chocolatey, super dark cherry. Oh my god, it's so good. Ooh. Yeah, I, I want to drink this. This is just not my jam. Go ahead. No. I, I can't drink anymore. Mm. He doesn't. Marshall, what do you think? I'm not a real boy. Okay. It's <laughs> It's got booze in it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's like a barley, <laughs> barley wine. It's yeah, thick yeah and this, is, this is right and up yummy. there. Um, what's that uh, golden Ooh. rock? Oh, that's good. That's way different than this, dude. Yeah, I know. That's what I was pointing <laughs> out. I'm like, you remember golden <laughs> rock? It's nothing like it's that. Not- <laughs> it's just the opposite. <laughs> oh, this is just so frigging complex. Oh, it's so good. Though. Is it just like a strong ass stout? It's a strong ass stout, also known as imperial stout. Yes, you guys uh, know it's that. so elitist. So I have not read the description. Uh, this one comes from Rickabad out of Pensacola, for- Florida. <sighs> Uh, I've not read the description myself, so I'm going to go through it with you guys. But I'm curious because I get a l- basically everything that Craig was saying he gets out of this is what I get as well. I do feel like the aroma is different than the flavor. Yes, absolutely. And I apologize. Yeah. My allergies are killing me lately. Jesus. Uh, so Rick says the ingredients are on the bottle. <laughs> oh, it smells good. It smells so good. Uh, but this be, has been aging in my keyser since 2019. I wow. feel like we picked I'm just sorry. the right it's beers. It's been to in wait his keyster since 2019. <laughs> It all makes sense now. <laughs> it all makes sense. Chaka-laka. That explains the aroma, the texture, the darkness. Wait. The dark. Oh, you. 
<laughs> the smell. <laughs> <laughs> Not the show. Oh, he said Keezer. We are children. Uh, Keezer, oh, yes. That Keezer. is a kicker in her built to do it. God, it. Just for you That's dumbass. awkward. All right, here we go. That's awkward. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, I'm sure your Keister's just fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes me think of Home Alone. <laughs> Anytime I get you no good. So, uh, all right. So, let me reread this. Uh, wrong, wrong one. Actually, here we go. And I'm not the guy to judge these because I hate this style of beer. No, it is just not good. Not as much as it hates you, bud. Uh (laughs) He says the ingredients are on the bottle. It's been aging my keyser since 2019. So this is four years old at this point. That's pretty amazing. He says I brewed it for a local homebrew competition and it scored a 37 out of 50. That's pretty good. Uh, not a bad score, but received many comments that it was a bit too solventy. Do you guys? Do you know what that means? Solvent. Um, like acetone. chemically acetone yeah, yeah yeah that kind of characteristic that yeah oh, I didn't I didn't get any of that it was just super just way too complex and thick see I I definitely get smooth creamy yeah not solventy no I, I now I have to taste it again to see if I get that yeah I, the smooth and creamy part I, I'm in a hundred percent behind but man it's, it's hey, just it seems very high it's got 4.3 percent of chocolate malt that's pretty good how do you know that I'm reading the label you had to take a picture of it and then well, zoom in yes on it. Yes, I did. <laughs> that's what old people do. Craig is so old. Okay, yeah, that's actually it's fairly clever of you to yes. do that. So yes. uh, he says many suggested I should let it age for a year or two to smooth out the flavors. Hopefully, I achieved that by now. Okay, so oh, well, it's smooth now. So yeah. yeah, I don't get any solventy. I get I I, I, I yeah. definitely Rick. I definitely taste some of the heat. I get a little bit of the heat, but yeah, his keister produces smooth <laughs> heat. Wow. Yeah. Smooth flavors and heat. All right. Justin's not going to leave that alone. He's it's not even really, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he says, I only had two bottles keister. left. <laughs> oh, this was real. <laughs> this was really nice of Rick. He says, I only had two bottles left, so I thought I'd share one of them. Oh, with Rick, you I appreciate that. Thank you. That. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's pretty Thank rad. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Dude, this Thank just you, goes back to like what a dope community yeah. this is. Like yeah. guys that are Absolutely. just putting their stuff out there and like, hey, I got two left. Try it. Tell me what you think. And and then, yeah, and we're making fun of his keister. I'm not. I am not. I like his keister. Yeah, you are. (laughs) Oh, my gosh, Justin, I have to apologize. What? He fermented this with a Belgian Abbey yeast. I knew it. (laughs) So it should have, if, you know, it's not too far off from a gold. Also, God dang it. I knew it. (laughs) That was my point. When I used to crack Golden Drocks and have Chinese food, this beer took me back to that point where it was just, it is a heavy, heavy beer that can hold up yeah. to like spicy, dense food. It's really good, actually. I, I like it's Golden not, Drock. When I say I don't like it, it doesn't mean that it's not good. It means I just, that's not where I'm at in life where I want to drink those types of things on a regular basis. The quality is there. And, and letting it age since 2019. That's awesome. Sounds like it's done some absolute and wonders. It's yeah. also 10.5 percent. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. That is. It, it is a good quality beer. It's just I just yeah. don't like the flavor. Disclaimer. Oh my. Elizabeth. We, I believe we have 13 beers to review. Yes. We are on beer three and Number two, two have or been, three. Two have been over 10 percent. This is. I'm gonna just say this now. We may get a we little gone. bit shitty. Yeah, that's just the way this is gonna be. So short uh, and shitty. Ju- I, <laughs> it's a short. You know and what that. Episode. You know what that means. Short and shoddy. That's where I got that from. Right. Short and shitty though means that you're close to the gate, close to paroling. Because I work in a prison, as does your wife. Greg. Right. It means that you're close to the gate and you get a little amped up and you get short. Well, Tim, to the you gate were in shitty. prison. Yeah. Did you get short and shitty? Yeah, he did. Yeah. That's his house the, the, first off the yeah. his part. wife would be very mm. upset that you called Michelle it Tim the never served time yeah. Tim is a model citizen so I, I, I just want to point out before we move on to the next beer uh, which I'm tapping <laughs> Justin to start pouring now I really liked this one I thought it was great I did too Marshall. Oh, just hand me the paper and, and pick whatever one you want yeah that's fine so uh, he, what Rick says which I think is really interesting is uh, do the do the canned one last uh, in that bunch yeah so pick anyone you want just don't I pick know, the can I know my bad uh, he said he pitched two packs of Imperial A10 Darkness just like that last brewer uh, used A10 Darkness it's a fantastic Irish stout yeast right it's the Guinness strain we all know that but then he pitched one pack of Y Yeast Belgian Abbey 2. And so that would kind of amplify some of that. I think that's why what I was picking up, that fruitiness, uh, that fruitiness on the nose, is I think is a big part of why what I, what I was getting was that mm. Belgian Abbey yeast. And it's, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I liked it a lot. 
So, all right, on to the next one. I'm not going to read anything about it. You guys, what do you, you keep pointing at me. Do you want me to pour you some or do you not yeah. want any? Mm. You are a good beer pourer. All right, here we go. This you have is the bottle in your hand. Wash it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things I could cut out, but I don't think I'm going to. It's literally Craig trying to figure out this how to pour a bottle crazy. of beer. We already got a start difference Go easy, going in the though, other the, direction. It, at the God very, dang it, Craig. Pour on the side. This is Justin. No. I'm I'm banishing you from handing them beers before you and I, I get first I was told bar. to never pour the beer on the side. That is oh, not I the right I pouring style. I need the beer back. Yeah. Marshall needs some. The full flavor is a full pour. That but is not true. Just give me your glass, Justin. I, I, want, the clear, I want the clear sample. Look how beautiful I don't that share is. beers. Wow. Shaking your shit up. No, That's look at that. Pretty. Give me your beer. Wow. I want why, that one. Why? Yeah, just trust me. But yours looks better. Now yeah. it's like we're kissing. There, it's, well, it might as well. Damn the rules. I will pour. <laughs> I'll pour from here on out. So, I'm curious. Obviously, a little bit different than the last one we a had. A little bit different. <laughs> a tad different. Ebony and ivory. Do you, it is, yeah. It's like it's like we went oh, from this is this is hazy as this dark looks, as they get to about, about as light as they get. This so. looks lagery. Well, it's hazy because of the way Craig poured the damn bottle. So we're not going to judge you for oh, that, oh, Craig. I poured this it correctly. tastes a bit pale. I poured it correctly. <laughs> you you did not. <laughs> <laughs> fight, fight, fight! Mm. Every, all, every listener right now is like, "Ooh, they can do it. They get a fight. They is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? No, we're, sm- we're all smiling. So, what do you think? I want I want to hear your impression. That's good. It's uh, I got nothing on the smell. Of course you don't. Of we course I don't. we expect nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we never expect him to smell a thing. But it's. It, there's not a pungent aroma on this. Which, what does that remind you of? Like wh- an ale. Lager. Yeah, pale. Ale, ale, lager, and a ale. beer. <laughs> like, a, like a pilsner, like a store bought yes, yeah, pilsner, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what I get to. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty it's good. Little, it's a little bitter. Mm, that tastes oh, good. I get, I get aroma. Yeah. Yep, I get it. But it's good. I like it. I love the way it smells. Man, I wish I. I can't. Did you? Can you hand me the <laughs> hand me the cap for this? That's where like he put the way his key. That smells. You don't like the way it smells, really? No, he farted. Oh my god! <laughs> Everybody, take a whiff. <laughs> Craig's like, please do. <laughs> this Craig, is ridiculous. Craig's we, crying yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. We're it's gonna a, be crying in about two minutes. Yeah. You know. You know when Craig looks the most like Christina? That's his daughter. That's Craig's daughter. Is when, when he farts. D- when he's. <laughs> <laughs> when he squeaks and starts laughing about it, yeah. Uh, he fluffed. All right, so yeah, this is what I thought it was. Uh, is it a lager? Do you want me to give it away before you guys give a oh, thorough review? It's or? Uh, Craig, what is your best educated guess? It's not guess? a lager. No, it's not a lager. I'm, I'm going to bet three to one. It's a lager. Oh. It's more flavor than a lager. No Craig, way, Craig. It's a lager. I yeah, already Justin. said that. Except it's a very specific kind of lager that starts with a P and usually a it's a pilsner. Ale. No. <laughs> it's a very specific kind of lager that starts with a P. A pale ale. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very specific <laughs> lager. Oh, uh, uh, beer. Pilsner? A pilsner, yeah. I said pilsner. Does anybody want to guess what country this pilsner comes from? China. A China <laughs> pilsner. A Chinese pilsner. <laughs> Uh, I did just have an Indian Pilsner the other day, and it was phenomenal. Huh. Wait, it was from really India? Good. From India. They, they brew it in India, but it was exported to curry chicken. Is that The not, curry pizza company. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. What is that? Would that not be an IPA then? An India Pale Ale? That's an ale, though. But India Pale Ale wasn't made in India. Indian? It was made to import to, to India. So you can transport it without yeah. it going bad. Yeah, exactly. You know all the stuff. You do all your research. Dude, I know a lot of useless knowledge. So does anybody have a guess what what uh, what country this mm. this Pilsner? There are two countries that are Is really this Australian? Known. Australian Pilsner? No. There, there are two. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are two countries that are really known for their Pilsner. One is the Czech Republic. Philadelphia. The, the other is... G- Earth. Germany. 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 Oh, we got it. We're so yes. good at this. That's right by Philadelphia. I'm German. Yeah, yeah, you are. Actually, so am I. That's the. Mo- I did my 23 in me. I thought I was. And honestly, thought I was Italian my whole life until I did 23 in me. Why would you think that? You don't look because Italian I'm a mutt, dude, and I'm, I'm from adopted families. So, uh, here. So here's the deal. Uh, this is a German style pilsner. German style pilsner should be bready. 
uh, you know, very basic malt character. You should get a little bit of that nice kind of white bread character. White no, bread. Nose. Yeah, exactly. Nose and flavor. Uh, and and very simple otherwise with a nice, you know, just enough bitterness to kind of take you through the beer. Bitter. I think it's, it's great. It's smooth. I think it's great. Very yeah, this is super yeah, drinkable. I like I'm, I'm, I tell you what, his bottle has me thrown off because this says the premium malts, Suntory, and the bottle is written in Japanese. Japanese or Chinese. So I wonder Ooh. where. Broken Arm Lager. Yeah. Ooh, I, won, I, 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 won, I believe his name is Jeff, and I wonder where Jeff sent these from. Probably Hospital? Japan. I think he lives in Japan, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Um, I, I guarantee he emailed me and then. <laughs> He said, I was having so much fun packing that I forgot to, I forgot the note. <laughs> and then he wrote a big, long note. Uh, but I, I do believe That's he good. emailed me and he's from Japan. And so he, he wow. sources ingredients differently than we do. Obviously, we are, you know, we're as far as it feels it. like. Yeah, exactly. As far as it feels like we are from Yakima and Willamette Valley for hops. And, you know, we have ample access to everything we need to make fantastic world class beer here. And so, and over there stupid you know, question. So. I mean, because you have you have your loggers and and stuff that are over there. Is it it's that much harder to get? Uh, I don't live there, so I don't know exactly. Uh, but from what I've heard, pretty much if you're outside of the United States or or North America, you know, for the most part, it sourcing the you know we. A lot of the people who talk about beer, who have a voice in brewing and beer, are from the United States. And so a lot of people who listen to this stuff or who want to who read it or whatever, they're looking for the stuff that we're talking about, and it can be very difficult for them to get it. Uh, so it's kind of fun to have these beers sent to us. I, again, I believe it is from Japan. He even calls this next beer Ume Dry, U-M-E, Ume, which I'm assuming is a Japanese term. I think Ume means... Japanese, it's an American. <laughs> well, I w- the label's beautiful. Yeah, but yeah. that's not the. Beer. I would. Yeah. What? It, what, what's the? So the label. Obvi- we're, he, you're joking. I'm, that's not I'm, his label. I'm thinking it's Dork. just a bottle of beer with a piece of tape on it. That's all yeah. that it is. Yeah. yeah. So it, that's a, ultimately what it is. But he did reuse a, what seems to did be. Did he a, condition a, that bottle, or are we using a used dirty bottle? All right. So a mystery. We're going into his next. He sent four beers. Guys. Yes, wow. I like him. He's my favorite. Yeah, I also like that he sent bombers, so, so we can actually get a decent. Yeah, amount. be gonna, careful. I think this was bottle conditioned. There's some stuff in the bottom of the of the bottle. It won't hurt you. It's just going to make your beer not look as pretty. Make Diamonds tomorrow. are made under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the ume. Let's liquid diamonds. Is it maybe umami? Oh, Timmy, Ooh. you're gonna like this right. garlic umami. It, whenever I look at Tim and I say you're gonna like this, it's he knows what it's gonna be. What do you think? Before you even smell it, what do you think it's going to be? Sour. I think it's a sour. Yeah. Sour. Oh, yeah. It looks like one. Yes. Yep. It's got that, that hazy golden tint. Yep. Oh, I it's can beautiful. barely smell that it is one. Oh, it smells <laughs> so good. I wish I could good. smell better. It's a sour. I can smell it. Boy, this is not the kind of sour that I'm used to having. No, it's a very it's light flat. One. There's not a lot of uh, punch to it. It's good. So I think yeah, ube is a, I, I think ube is a fruit or something. Uh, I got to look it up now on the old huh. interweb. Yeah. Well, don't look it up yet. You're supposed to review before you know anything. Yeah, about I don't like beer. sours, but I like that. It's, it's very, it's, it's very a mild. Little more mild than that. It's sour we had like. Oh, it's good. Three months. It is ago. good. Wow, that's good. Okay, so ume is pronounced uma. O o m a o o m e. Umami. Umami. Oh, Go figure. Oh, oh my. A fleshy, so it's like Craig, yellow fruit, <laughs> similar to an apricot, but having a sour flavor <laughs> used mainly to drink preserves and salsas. <laughs> it is, turns out, it's deciduous <laughs> to Eastern Asia that bears the ume related to the plum and apricot bearing a fragrant white, pink, or red blossom in winter. Yeah. Mm. It's like, I'm going to get an Ume tattoo. I feel like Jeff should rename this. I love you too, Justin. Craig. Call it the Craig. Yeah, the Craig. Craig. The Craig. The Craig. It's, it's a fleshy fle- white beard. Craig-er. It's fleshy like Craig. Fleshy, big, <laughs> bold man. <laughs> Just flat out, the Craig. Right. This is going to be too hard to hide it from the you Craig-er. guys. I'm going to do my best, but mm. on this one, he... Uh, you can taste the apricot. Yeah. I Well, it's not apricot. It's Ume. It's or like Ume apricot. Or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said... It, this is a yearly summer brew after ume syrup is finished. Oh. 
I throw the wort onto ume after uh, I had to turn this over, removing the syrup. So there's a, a, it's um, got an aftertaste. It must be a fruit or something, I guess. It, yeah, it's a yellow craggy fruit. Yeah, fleshy fruit. Uh, yeah. And then you remove it from the beer. It, it <laughs> then conditions in the bottles for up Huge. to a year. Uh, I like it. What do you guys think? I it's unique it's on, on a scale of like one to ten sours. Like this is like a three. If he served this to me and just said it's a fruited lager or blonde ale, I would buy into that more. I, I would perceive it differently. I don't get tart from it. Yeah, no the, tart. Yeah. I yeah if he told me tart. this is a sour, I, I don't get, get it. Yeah, I'm. I'm not understanding the sour so, aspect of it. So sours are really bold for me. But Full this of that is lactic like a, acid. A beginner level. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. So you like it, Craig? I do. Yeah, because I it's like not it. be, specifically because it's not tart. It, yeah, exactly. This was a nice departure from those porters. Oh, you should revisit those. The, those were stouts. Those but. are stouts. <laughs> They're all the same. I'm just saying. Dude. Come on, yeah. dark and heavy. <laughs> They're all the same. Aren't you all a right. professional? No. So this one, I am definitely not saying a thing. This is another one from Jeff, but I do play one on TV. This is another one. Or this one specifically, I am not telling you anything about because I want to hear your thoughts. Can and you give I, us a hint? I think it's Close beer. Your eyes. It's beer. It's beer. Okay. I think you guys can nail it. Okay, but you have to believe in yourselves, Timmy. You have to believe in yourself, man. Don't because I believe you're setting, your, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. <laughs> oh, I won't be disappointed. I'll be Dude, over here laughing. While Jeff you guys sent about it. a serious amount yeah, of beer. Jeff's not messing around. And I tell you what, that's I mean, it's not like bottle. it's fourteen dollars to ship this from Japan if that's where it's coming here, from. So here's thank the you. deal. I think his name is Jeff. Does that look like Jeff to you? That's Jeff, right? Oh, that's Hefe. Hefe. <laughs> no, I think it's Jeff. It's that's Jeff. Jeff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't read cursive anymore these days. They don't teach that. I speak that in cursive, and the problem is, is it's, it's really hard to understand. Wow. It's yeah, gorgeous. It, it, it is, is bright. It, it, is, is, it is as clear color. as it gets, right? Yeah. Oh, this is... This so looks, let's. Like I want to hear Tim's impressions... On the nose, because he doesn't smell anything. So let's see if he gets anything from this. Paper. Nothing. You get paper, Craig? No, I'm talking about Tim. Oh, oh, you're making got, a joke. I got absolutely nothing. Okay, nothing from you. Craig, what do you think? Refreshing. Yeah. He does not provide. This is like this is like Ooh. SNL Jeopardy, where like answer the question. He's like, Threve. Threve is not a word. That's a like a clove spice. Okay, so what? Yeah, I have spice on that one. In the flavor, mm. not on the nose? On the nose, spice. So oh, I a roasted allspice. Roastiness on the... Yeah, I definitely get allspice, clovey, cinnamon on the nose, yeah. Oh, it's not man. very strong, though. No, it's not, it's not overwhelming at all. Ooh. I think it's cardamom. Cardamom? Some star anise. It reminds me of cloves. Yeah. Totally. 100% does. Bitter. Oh. oh my God! That is cinnamony. Yeah. That is. I that get. Is, I, yes. is this a shot of Fireball? It tastes like Fireball. It is like wow. That is a trip. I have never is, ever had anything yeah. like this before. It's like a shot of Fireball. Hmm. What do you think? Do you like it, Tim? Just sucked on a it's, cinnamon it, stick. It's our, it's, it's not my jam, but it's, yeah, it's good. It's there's no off flavors. It's just no, weird. No yeah, it's yeah. like I my brain is trying to wrap itself around this right now. Yeah, it's, I have it's memories very of weird. smoking cloves. I'm telling you, definitely smoky. It's it well, it like, smells like, like, like somebody smoking cloves next mm-hmm, to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. We we go camping every Memorial Day up at the up at the river, uh, and there's a guy up there who smokes clove cigarettes, and it that's what it exactly that's what, what I, this yep. tastes like. So 100%. who in this day and age still smokes clove cigarettes? It's like, hey, I want to <laughs> yeah. smoke, but I want my lungs to bleed. That's a big ass bottle. Andy too. does. That's the that's yeah. There, yeah, it's a big ass bottle of it. So that is a pumpkin spiced ale. Hmm. Did you get the pumpkin? Uh, pumpkin spice ale. You don't usually. I did not uh, get the pumpkin. Pumpkin. Now that you hear about it's the not pumpkin, usually, you're like, okay, I can see like the the that sweet. Yeah, syrupy brown sugar kind of cinnamony back end of a pumpkin. That like the, like that the cinnamon puree. sticks and yeah. that you boil on the stove. So I, this, I would not order another one of those. Yeah, I don't like pumpkin ale. Uh, that that styles. I don't yeah, like. Spices I, I'm not in a, a 28 year old housewife. I, but I'm I, not jamming with that. But I will say, so so 
Jeff did some really interesting stuff here. So he says, first off, that he added roasted pumpkin into the mash. So before the wort was drawn off and boiled. So there's that. A lot of people don't add any pumpkin at all, right? But then uh, after that, he added ginger, cinnamon, Mm -hmm. and nutmeg. No clove. But it really does give that impression of clove. But I wonder if that's not because he fermented it with vice beer yeast. So Hefeweizen yeast, hmm. which is known. Oh, bless you. Which is, <laughs> which is known for, for pushing off, you know, producing banana, isoamyl acetate, and for vinyl glycol, which is that kind of clovey. Definitely phenol. clovey. Yeah. 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 For sure. So it, mm-hmm. that, that was a smart move, I think, for people who like this style of beer. I personally am not a fan of this style of beer. I don't like cinnamon in my... I like cinnamon no. on toast or on cereal, and that's yes. it. This is like a really yeah. crazy, strong, like, pho broth where you get those crazy notes of cinnamon at times with the star anise and... Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. That, yeah, and again, I don't want you to think that we had like a, a bowl of broth in front of us because this was not like that. No, it tastes just, like an amber, an amber ale just yeah. with these spices in it. Yeah. yeah, those spices threw me for a loop. So have you ever... I feel like you guys have all had spiced beers before or pumpkin beers as yeah, they call them, yeah. even though there's not pumpkin in them usually. What, this this was a, a decent version. I'm just not a fan of the style. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, it didn't taste bad. It's yeah, just it wasn't not, terrible. It's just, not, yeah. just not my thing. Just not my flavor. And that's okay. So this is fun. Jeff sent us. Same guy. Same guy. He did this. He did this. Dude, Jeff is a friggin' savage. And he did it from Japan, which is which nuts. Like I said, it's not fourteen dollars to ship it here. It's got to be at least a million (laughs) dollars. I'm really excited for this one. You can pour it all the way down. This is a commercial. Oh, oh my God! I recognize this beer. You're not supposed to be looking though, Justin. Blind test. No, he's not looking at the label. Label. Yeah, look at. There's no label. But I'm gonna read it to you. I'm not going to read it to you. Yeah, you could say the top word. Acai. Can I read it? No, you don't know no, what don't it read says, it. Okay. dork. It is Asahi. Asahi, yeah. And uh, so oh, he, this looks good. He, I had I mentioned love many. That. I love Asahi. But, love Asahi. So he had emailed me. If I recall our conversation correctly, I think it was like a year ago. He emailed me and was like, oh, I heard you saying you love Asahi. You got to try Asahi Draft. Oh, yes. And I said, oh, I've had it on draft, you know? And he's like, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, Asahi draft. It's different than nice. the beer you guys get out there. So this is we are trying for the first time. It's beautiful. Dude, this is like Goldilocks's hair. So this I mean, is, this the, the style, that the BJCP, that this would fit under the BJCP is International Pale Lager. Uh, and it's one of my favorite styles. I have made this beer multiple times, especially you three. Love every time I make it. It's it's mm. simple. It's it doesn't have much hopping to it. It's that's good. It's a good. Oh my god! Effing blank. This is amazing. Oh, oh it's yeah, so good. I love, I love Wait, so did he make oh. this or did he not? No, no, make no, no, it? no. This is Asahi yeah. made this. Yeah. Oh, this but is a nice beautiful. twenty-two oh ounce dude. Your toasted rice. rice. Wow, this is, that's this good. is what we go when we go to Tempanyaki. Yeah, this is our dude. I need me some hot and spicy on a flip flop. Yep. Yep, it's delicious. Mm, makes it me want a hot dog delicious. real bad. A hot dog. <laughs> a hot dog. <laughs> a hot dog. <laughs> it's a movie quote. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah it's, that's a Jersey this thing, is too. Great. He does every movie quote. Love, it's yeah, so good. I would so drink good. this nonstop. Refreshing. Toasted yeah. rice. I mean, there just, are, this with is bacon. Fire. There are already... Wait, why did he put a... Wait, hold, where's the can at? He put his own label on the can, though. Well, I th- because we can't read the Japanese. I can read Japanese. I'm fluent. Is that what it is? Yeah. It says right there, Asahi Draft. I, I can read Japanese. I think because he didn't want us to think that maybe he reused the can for something. That doesn't make any sense. My mind's blown. Why are you saying Asahi, by the way? That's like a like a Brazilian berry. It's Asahi. Asahi. Yeah, I like, but I like to pronounce it Asahi. <laughs> no. Wrong. Asahi? He's probably right, actually. <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think he is either. I just call it Asahi. Asahi. Yeah. That's amazing. It's like that. super good. Yeah, that super checks. Good. Is there more left in the can? Yeah. Because oh I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll have some more. You don't no. need any more. We're Craig and I are going to handle He's this. No. We're going to handle this. It is so good. So Jeez, good. why are you slapping me? Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, Jeff, for sending Jeff, all those thank out. Thank you so much. Yeah, here, a little, have a little tidbit more there. 
what was your guys' favorite beer in that last batch? Besides the Asahi. Oh. We, everybody knows we love simple oatmeal, pale lagers. Oatmeal stout. The Uri- by far, I tell you what. By the, far. Is that sour in that last batch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow everybody's mind. The Uric for me, even though I don't like that style beer. That's it's so just a good beer. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good, just dude. a good beer, man. Seriously. There's also something magical about drinking something that's been aged for a long time. So that's I'm I'm going with I think it was Rick's stout that he sent. It wasn't the Uric, which I thought was phenomenal. But that, that one that's been aged since 2019. Mm. That was good too. I really liked yeah, it. Yeah, that was good too. Oh, I thought that was the Uric. Uh no. The Uric came to us last year. Okay, I so like that's about a year old. I think the the 2019 one then. Oh, so that's the yeah. That's, yeah and that's, again, I don't like that style of beer. Like I wouldn't order that on purpose. Yeah. that was just good. Yeah, I mean the Sahi takes my number one because it's, it's well, yeah, that's just so simple. But that's like, and it's, uh, that's I what like we like. A Ferrari. Okay, I mean whatever. Yeah. I mean, kind of a thing. <laughs> this is the I want a '65 Cuda, <laughs> and it wasn't made by yeah your a patron. Big beer, your yeah, patron. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Acai wasn't exactly. made by exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, Wait, that, are, are you guys sponsored by them? Yeah, by Asahi. Yeah, uh, hi Asahi. Would you like to sponsor the Brew Lost Week podcast? I don't think they even know who we are. Oh, dude. they suck then. Yeah, they don't yeah. suck. They're actually be, incredible beer. Their beer is really. I good. love their uh, Sapporo Asahi. Asahi, Asahi those, we're yeah. looking for patron sponsors. If you're out there listening, three dollars a month is a. That's all we're asking. Three dollars a month, and you can save Mark <laughs> Show from being hungry. Don't sell us short, Tim. I need more. Than, I like right, five, three, three thousand a month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got to take a quick break. I don't know about you guys, but I got to go drain the old bladder here. We've had a lot to drink and we've got a lot more to come. So we will be right back with more beer reviews. After a long brew day, the last thing I want to do is waste more time chilling wort. I've tried so many different options and ultimately I settled on the super efficient immersion chillers made by Jaded Brewing. With the King Cobra and Hydra, I'm able to chill my entire batch of work from boiling to just a few degrees above groundwater temperature in as little as six minutes. If an immersion chiller is right for your brewery, then do yourself a favor and check out all of the rad options Jaded Brewing has to offer at jadedbrewing.com and be sure to let them know Brewlosophy sent you. As every brewer knows, the best beer requires the best hops, which Yakima Valley Hops provides fresh from the source to brewers around the world, carrying everything from classics like Cascade to modern favorites like Galaxy and Mosaic, as well as other ingredients and gear, Yakima Valley Hops has it all. And don't forget to check out their new podcast, The Late Edition, where the YVH crew goes into depth on our favorite plant with industry experts. Head over to YakimaValleyHops.com now to see all they have to offer and subscribe to The Late Edition wherever it is you listen to podcasts. All righty, let's jump right back into this whole beer review thing that we've been doing. Do not drink that, Craig. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that would be nasty. there is more than just the the dump beers in that oh, that's bucket. The there, final, final. that's the final, final. Yeah, but let's get back into this beer review thing. The first beer that we're going to review in this segment is for, comes from Eric Hagen. Now, just to let you know, Eric Hagen sent us one of his beers uh, for the West Coast Pilsner Average Brew Review episode. You all three have. Tasted that beer. We probably thought it was... I don't remember which one Eric submitted, but we probably thought it was good because most of those beers were really, really well brewed. Uh, I don't want to tell you much about this one, but it is interesting, and I'm very curious to hear what you guys think about it before you learn what it is. Now, there is a little label, that, but you have it turned away from you, Tim. I do. Uh, so you don't know what it is, but it is modeled after something. I will tell you that. So what do you think? Craig, you look like you're ready to oh, say something. It's modeled after a red ale. It's beautifully I, I would say beautiful. That. Almost it more is, orange than red, though, in a weird way. It's, it's a beautiful orange. color, but it is, a, it is oh, man, not I, my jam. <laughs> I'm sorry. Eric, strike out. <laughs> Tim just dumped yeah, his. I'm, oh, you, Eric, beautiful. Mine's going in the in the. That in tastes the, amazing. So I have not, I have not tasted it. I've smelled it, and I think it. I think it smells exactly like what he was going for. I oh. will say, in my opinion. So this he modeled this after an old fashioned. You guys know what that is? A cocktail. Oh, oh that makes sense. Ah. I taste Bam. that and I hate them. I love I hate, old fashioned. Yeah, I, I know you do. I hate brown liquor. So I, I love brown liquor. It does taste like that. I hate brown mm. liquor cocktails. So I'd be very I'm not a curious huge fan. 
It smells really good. And by the way, I said it looks orange. I was trying to give you guys a little hint. Boy, you orange. get that. Yeah. So as you say the old fashioned, you get that dark tart yeah. cherry. Yeah. You yeah. get Eric. the liquor. Oh, yeah. that Amazing job. Terrible. Man. That's great. I'm uh, adjusting it to him. I can't do that. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. Are Here. you being for real, Craig? For real. Laura likes old fashions. <laughs> oh, uh, man. So, so Laura I doesn't hate drink brown liquor. Laura doesn't drink whiskey. Should we she call likes Laura old fashions. to taste this? No. No, she was just in here. <laughs> we had to restart our recording because she came walking oh, in, actually. This is great. I uh, like this. Would you like to have mine as well? Or sure. You're going to get I tell you, get it, lit. I, I tell you what. If, if you're going for old fashioned on this, you knocked it out of the park. Yeah, Home 100%. run. Oh, but if great. you're trying to get oh, our vote of, of thankfulness, I love it. no. Yeah. Will you dump it for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. Dump it in my glass. <laughs> so Craig loves it. Wow. You win the Craig Award. Uh, let me read a little bit about how he made this. He uh, he says, this is my annual brew called Cocktail Series Old Fashioned. Uh, it's an Imperial Red mm. Ale. I think that's the part of it that I enjoyed. Can you, you can you make tell- a Tito's and soda? I'm a big fan of those. <laughs> <laughs> a Tito's and soda <laughs> ale. Yeah. Uh, it's an Imperial Red Ale that that is... Secondary on uh, cherries and bourbon soaked oak with a touch of orange liqueur. It's yep. the orange liqueur that I tasted. That yeah, I, I, I get yeah. the cherries and orange big time in that oaky backdrop. Yeah, Ugh, no, I, I just don't like I was it's it's weird. I was just having this conversation with my wife the other day. We were talking about cocktails that she likes that I don't like and vice versa. I she she does not. She would never drink whiskey neat. You could serve me the shittiest whiskey there is out there. And I would prefer it neat than in a cocktail. I just don't like whiskey cocktails like an old fashioned. And the orange plus the whiskey thing, just it's so gross to me. But I know people who love it, you know. And so we were just talking about this. The orange liquor in this beer is what threw it off for me. Mm. I, that flavor just, I love oranges. I love it. I love OJ. I love mimosas. I lo- mm, that flavor. Great. I know. I can tell you love it. He's over here sipping it like a weirdo. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he says, "Drink it for yourself or have it on your next beer review episode." Well, here you go. There you go. Yeah, Eric. Uh, whatever you choose, I'd like to hear what you have to think. If you don't have time, I understand that too. Well, we thought we didn't have time, but uh, here we are doing it now. We're so. making time. Yeah, we made time just for you, Eric. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I actually know a whole Hagen family up in uh, the Washington area, Washington State. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, you know, I not my jam, but it was well made. Yeah, yeah. There was no Very off. Good. It's just Very the orange good. liquor is what. So what? How? As the only one who's sitting here still drinking, drinking it, it. Yeah. Yes. The orange, the the whiskey. It it's got a it's got a whiskey flavor to me. Um, it's just it's good, refreshing. You, see it's that is what that is the opposite of refreshing to me. Yeah. Oh, it's it is good. Thank Craig, you, Craig. You're a kook. You're off the show. But here's the thing, Craig. When we go to Craig's house, we're playing pool. He's drinking the whiskey. He's yeah. drinking Canadian whiskey out, but he mixes it with soda, so he likes that sweet. He's do he does. Well, Craig's a real man out of the group. Yeah. I mean, let's just be real. I mean, he's drinking Canadian whiskey. So a hey, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. A hey. hey. yeah. Craig loves yeah, his hoser. whiskey and free prescriptions. Yeah, hoser, yeah. But but he does <laughs> stinking hoosier. In, in all in all seriousness, you do drink a lot of soda and Crown. Is True, it, that's yeah. your thing. And I wonder if this doesn't kind of because that's not refreshing to me. When when no. we're at your house and you bring out these big glasses of soda and Crown Crown and Pepsi or whatever it is, or even we're just taking shots of Crown Royale, that is not refreshing. Wait, to you me. have people it over to your me. house? I never get invited. Oh, I'm sorry, mm, oh, Craig. Oh, I'm sorry for throwing secrets. you under the bus. This yeah. is awkward. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, next time, Justin. Yeah, 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 yeah. He must have moved in between. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I love this. It's it is refreshing and good and yummy and it's ooh, rich. It's so I, good. I, I get a richness, but I that orange flavor with the mix of the beer and the whiskey just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, sure. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Is it two of the same? So we're moving on to the next beer, and we're just trying to figure out what they is. Oh, yeah. This is <laughs> this label's great. But I'm not going to show it to you guys until we pour the damn beer. Come on. This beer comes from Tim Harris. Tim, thank you for sending us beers. Another Tim. You're welcome. It better be. <laughs> You're welcome for what? <laughs> for, for being born. Thank you for being the neighborhood dad. All right, so Ooh. just by pouring it, I'm I'm seeing that it, it's not terribly. Here, you got to come grab the. We're so far away. Would you guys help Marshall out here? 
Was there two bottles of this? There were. And we're just going to share the one first? Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll crack the other one open. No, I don't think we need to. Uh, there's something I noticed right off the bat on this Not one. Not a lot of head. Very ta- flat. No. Very flat. <laughs> yeah. I'll take the bottle. Great. That may don't be a function. at the bottle. He's just looking. I'm looking at the label. We're not supposed to. I'm smelling juniperish. Juniperish? That sounds like a province oh, in India. Pine trees. Yeah. Ooh, it it, smel- I think it smells good. Mm. What do you think, Justin? Ooh, that tastes good. Yeah, very roasty, very malty. Bitter. Not your thing, eh? It's not, it's, it's not bad, though. Hmm. It's not good. No, I didn't say that. So what do you call that? Mm. That was complex and rich. Mm. Kind of like very you, multi. Kind of like you, Justin. Complex it's, and rich. Boom! It's it's an IPA. It's got to be right. It's gotta, oh, I would think you ain't wrong. Oh, you ain't Tim. wrong, Timmy. Oh, and it's, it's not my jam, but I've had a lot worse. It's beer, not jam. I it really tastes- like the way this smells. I got I I this. I don't mind the way it smells. This does that. And I can thing. barely smell. It reminds me of like 2005. Yeah, this is malty. Yeah. It's juicy. It's juicy, really. I haven't yeah. tasted it yet. I can't. Is it, Craig? So, Craig, what it do you is. think? Yeah, it's this color I, of your earmuffs over there. <laughs> I agree with the juiciness. <laughs> Craig was trying to look at his ears. It's kind of a. I saw that. His eyes went <laughs> what? both ways. What? What? It's Ooh. kind of a roasty one. Yeah. It's yeah. a roasty juniper. By roasty, what, what, when you say roasty, what exactly do you mean, though, Craig? Um, almond flavor. Uh, what? Almond? Almond. You associate roast with almonds? Who let this Have you ever guy had on roasted this show? almonds? I, I, what in the hell is what happening? Color? He's like, well, open yeah. your mind. What yeah. color is the spirit? He's like, oh, it's the sky. It's happy. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not How's it sky. taste? He's like, like your, like, love. How's it taste? Blue? Yeah. <laughs> when when, we're, when I when you say roast, what do you mean? I get roasted. Almond. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Have you ever had roasted almonds? <laughs> Is that what you were going for? Roasted almonds? No, I yes. love roasted almonds. <laughs> You didn't say roasted <laughs> almonds. You just said almonds. Tim is so happy that we're all si- so Tim, <laughs> Tim and Craig, friends for life, literally since you guys were seven, right? Or four. He's just realizing that his best friend since his childhood is just dumb. Is an idiot, an absolute idiot who doesn't know how to describe things. You're like, hey, what color is the sky? He's like, Dude, it's beautiful. It's happy. <laughs> it's happy. <laughs> Feel what the color love. is the grass? Depressed. Uh, it is red. I see red. That's the that's a, that's the, it ro- looks like an Irish red ale. Red and yeah. roasty. Oh, what a good name! Red and roasty. Red and roasty. That's my that's new a beer good name. One. Yeah, Marshall, uh, already that? stolen by Tim's wife, by the way. So <laughs> she's <Whoa>. not here. <laughs> oh, I think she'd appreciate that, Timmy. That's all right. Uh, red and roasty. Yeah, that's a little too alliterative for me. Hmm. Do you know what that means? No. <laughs> It's because he's illiterate. illiterate. I'm not illiterate. <laughs> he's like, did you me? just call me illiterate? Are you, are you calling me? Don't names? you come at me with that illiterate <laughs> talk. I'm not illiterate. Uh, so, what do you guys? What, style bitter. wise, it, it is bitter and it should be. What style do you think it is based on that? I said you, it was IPA. You said IPA. I say ale. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Craig, what color is this wall? <laughs> Brown. <laughs> He's like comfortable. If the moon was made of cheese, would, would you eat it? Is this, I know I would. Is this one of those like West Coast IPAs? <laughs> I don't it, taste it is IPA. A, uh, it is a red IPA, but but Brown. on top of being a red IPA, it is a double red IPA. Oh, uh, that's why I like single red IPAs, but yeah. doubles are tough. Singles for me. are better. Which, yeah. <laughs> Says the guy whose wife is out of town right now. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's yeah. why Craig's in such a good mood. Yeah. yeah. He's so excited to hang out and eat barbecue tonight. So here's the here's my question. What do you guys think the ABV is on this? Do you guys have any ideas on strength? Uh, it's got a 6.2. Probably a 8.9. 8. 8.9, Tim says. 6. 8.2. 8.2. 2. 6. 8%? Damn! Damn. Craig, winner, Craig winner. might not know words, but he knows his ABV. Winner, he knows winner, numbers. Barbecue dinner. He knows his numbers. I will say. I like it, though. I will say that this is a, so it is a double red IPA. So red IPA, I joke about there being numerous variations or versions of IPA. And uh, that's going to be fun. And don't like shake it up, syrup. though, dude. Don't shake it up. It looks like it, huh? Mm. But I joke about Are there we- being all these different versions of IPA. <laughs> Red IPA is one of them, but there, but it's it's one that I'm really happy with. 
basically what happened was you had regular pale IPA India pale ale. And then people were like, well, what if we treated these? <laughs> I see Craig getting very interested in what's going on over here. We're about uh, ready to have communion. Those bottles are so different. They look exactly the same. They're so little. No, they don't. Well, yeah. You mean they're different from the bottles we've been yeah, using? Yeah, they're little. Yeah, not compared yeah, to Yeah, they're that. like little eight-ounce bottles. They're cute. Yeah, these Aww. are communion bottles. They, they, It looks like we're going to be drinking communion wine, actually. Yes. Which I don't mean to judge, but I will not do. Yes, you will. I, I, I'm going to drag you into salvation. <laughs> do I have to tell you my sins? That's a bottle. Give me your Buckle cup. Buckle up. Uh, can you give me a rinse before we drink I'm that? Gonna, Thank dude, you. I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna shine you up good. But I want to finish what I was saying. You have red IPA. People created white IPA, which is a it, you'd think oh hazy. No, no. White IPA is a Belgian wit beer fermented IPA. So that uh, you know you got brown IPA, which is a brown beer that's super hoppy and higher strength. All that stuff. So I feel like that was a pretty quality version of a of a double red IPA. No oxidation. It yeah, was, good it, beer overall. It, it was good. It had a nice, you know, assertive bitterness that I like. Holy cow. This is going to be weird. You want oh, grape drink? Oh, we getting some purple drink. Oh, Wait Kool-Aid. till you smell that. Holy purple moly. Drink. It smells like cough syrup. Yeah, this wow, is... Wow, it uh, smells like licorice. Oh, I hope not. Be careful with this, guys. Whoa. Black licorice. Whoa. I don't get black licorice. I get, I get blueberry. It smells like blueberry waffles to me. Oh, I've got a schnozberry. Uh, boysenberry syrup. Oh, boysenberry syrup is exactly yes, what it's like. Yeah. You're at Knott's Berry oh, Farm, yeah. That, yep. uh, yeah, that syrup stuff that comes up. Yeah, that other yeah. on waffles. Oh, dear <laughs> Lord. You know what I meant. Nope. <laughs> I said be careful with it. <laughs> Tim's Tim's Ooh. poop shoot just turned inside out. <laughs> totally blueberry. Yeah, it tastes, uh, the smell is syrup. different. It smells like, it smells like cinnamon boysenberry waffles. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> that is like you took a glass of blueberry juice and and just let a cinnamon stick hang out in it. Oh, yes. it's so good! It's so good! It's so good! When I when it I tastes have, like a pie. When oh, I have, it tastes like pie. Hey, you didn't like it, Tim? I pie not. and ice cream. That you are so uncultured. You have oh <laughs> waffles. It's waffles. It tastes like waffles, waffles. to me. Yeah, it is I, I'm so getting I'm getting pie crust vanilla ice cream. Oh, that's what I get too. Imagine mm. this mm. over homemade vanilla ice cream. What the oh, hell? Wow, this, I don't want to drink a whole glass of it. <laughs> Tim like, just poured his glass out, and as we're talking about it, he poured himself. <laughs> I, got, out I, got, I got to taste some of this. <laughs> so when I when I have waffles, I have to pour this in every little square. That's amazing. This is wow. So and this is good. a glass of syrup, except it's not thick. It's not thick at all. It looks like it would be. Yeah, it, 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 the the le- look at the legs on that on the glass. Yeah, yeah. The the bottle is almost stained purple. Yeah, we've been doing this so long. But it's breakfast time. It's, it's breakfast kind of time. Flat. Oh man, <laughs> it's I want amazing. breakfast. Right, some, yes. it's not dude, supposed to be carbonated and some biscuits too. and gravy. <laughs> well, it should be. Oh, uh, carbonated might be nice, but it's not supposed to be. This is a mead. I will tell you that. I oh, mind it's a mead. It, it was a I'm sour. here to fight and drink my mead. What is mead, Justin? It's a it's it's um it's a type of wine, but it's Viking. It's made of Vikings. No, dang, <laughs> Vikings drink mead. Viking so wa- so regular wine is made of what? Grapes. So then, what is mead made of? Grapes. Grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Mothers. Chinchillas. <laughs> it is <laughs> chinchillas. <laughs> Chilla grapes. Honey. Get this guy out I've of had here. honey mead before. It's, I have a bottle in my office. You, oh, so you've had what? mead then? Yeah, I've had honey mead. Well, but it had, doesn't taste anything like this. You realize mead is just made of honey. It's, a, it's fermented honey. Oh, it said on the bottle it just said honey mead. Because they want people like you to know that it's made of honey. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Mm. Yeah, we so got this, it because we're Viking warriors and we close a deal. We have a shot of mead from a Viking barely, horn. I am a Viking sales so, warrior. Okay. This was from my first batch of mead ever. Dude, if this is his rookie make. So now that you know what it is, Tim, you seem like you're enjoying it a little bit more. This is so good. Waffles. I, w- I wouldn't order like a whole glass of it though. You would never. You would order like like a wine where they pour you yeah, that tiny little yeah. amount, and you're angry that they only gave you that much. That's how you order mead as well. Right. Yeah. So here's Tim, the deal. You're a, you're a Norwegian warrior. Oh, sh- dude, I nailed it. I hadn't looked at this yet. It's a blueberry mead. 
I thought it was going to be boysenberry. Because when he said boysenberry, that's what I tasted. Hmm. It's blueberry mead. He says this is a blueberry, spiced blueberry mead. For your next, quote, regular tasting, he calls this regular okay uh, with your wives. Oh, man, I'm sorry, I would sorry, like him Shane. to dial back the spice. This, this comes from Shane, Shane from Gilbert, Arizona. I'm sorry the wives aren't here. Your handwriting, by the way, is impeccable. Jeez. I'll be Tim's wife. I have a feeling he's left-handed. Every le- every Southpaw I know writes like this. Aww. Oh, that is lovely. Yeah, it's so nice. I know. It could be. It looks like my uncle's handwriting. Uh, if you are, by the way, you better let me know so I can brag about my ability to predict that. He says, this is from my first batch of meat ever. Left one plain and one got blueberry, cinnamon, and anise. You have been talking Definitely about star got the cinnamon. Oh yeah, me. yeah, that's there. I well, think star that's anise what, is very cinnamony, black licorice. That's black licorice. Yeah, but that's I, what but, does, I said black licorice right from the beginning. Yeah, but you were wrong, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now he's right because <laughs> it's star anise <laughs> and not black licorice. I tell you, if he dialed back oh. those notes just a little bit, this would be out of the park. I love this. I, yeah, I like I, it just I, the way it is. I would prefer a little less cinnamon. Yeah, you know, I, I get that. There, there pe- people have. I'm the same way with beer, right? Is like, I, I'm very sensitive to the spice thing. I think we had a beer earlier that had like different weird stuff in it. You know, just di- just don't put so much yeah. in there. This just strikes me like Christmas time. Like I'm gonna have this some oh. mulled wine. I mean, it, can you? I love mulled wine. Yeah. I love hot mulled wine. I really do. Yeah, it's good. I, it's yeah, weird. Dude. It's weird because I enjoy Maybe that. Some cheese, maybe. Can, hell yeah, dude. Mm. Eat this with a little, a little charcuterie board. Some smoky, some smoky gouda like yeah. last night. Remember that? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Last night. <laughs> what I, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is this. You mentioned like around the holidays. Can you imagine? It's the holidays. We all hang out at the holidays. We're sitting around. We got a fire going. There's National Lampoon's on the TV. We're holding hands. We're yeah. We're holding hands. We're talking about our, you know, our our lives, and we're drinking this beer, this mead. I want to taste this warm. I don't like, know. almost like a mold wine. I don't know what you do. Well, here's the weird thing: is when you think about red wine, you don't you don't chill red wine, right? Correct. Maybe that it may- would be you need to take the chill off of this and try it. Yeah. I wonder how much we, that would well. There's the just, there's still some there, so we'll we'll leave We're it around. Leave we'll it try, out and see what happens. We'll try it at the end. How about that? Yeah. We, if we forget to get back to it, I apologize. Now, you don't need to hold it in your hand. Justin. I'm gonna hold it in my hand. <laughs> 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 well, how about while we're waiting for this to warm up, uh, you open up the next bottle of of whatever. Yeah, Craig's got to go potty because he didn't go during our commercial. Because he's old. Break. Yeah, because he's old. It's, it's a growing stupid. problem, not a going problem. Just go in the dump bucket, Craig. Just kidding. Don't go. I love this. I'm going to finish this entire thing, but I do need a rinse before the next beer. Why don't you crack the next beer and hand me the, uh, you know, what we were doing. Hand me that thing there. There's, there's what did you think? So, so after you went back a second time, Tim. What did you think of it? Well, it, I I really didn't like it that much. I, even even the second time. Yeah, I didn't I didn't hate it though. But I, yeah, after I gave it a chance, it's it <sighs> still it smells like the. It tastes like mead. I mean that's that's a thing is you've got to be into yeah, mead. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. <sighs> oh, that's pretty. It didn't taste horrible. It's just not. It's not what I like. You're gonna like this next one, Tim. All I can right. tell. So you know what that looks like? I'm I'm still drinking my meat over here, but that looks like wow. an Aperol spritz. I just came back from a Europe trip. Oh, to there Rome. you go. It has that orange color of an Aperol spritz. It smells like an Aperol. Oh, this is great. This comes from a local brewer, Bradley Jennings, who has a really grown wolf. <laughs> that would be mm. Bradley Gaines. Gaines, <laughs> yeah, Brad <laughs> Gaines, yeah, but. Uh, I, I just I feel like I want to talk about this mead more. It's so complex yeah. and so good. I like this a lot yeah, better. I, I'm telling you, I want to try this mead like you would a, a spiced wine. Just put it in a pot and just kind of let it just like a slow boil and just see if it tastes any better. I have to imagine that's been done, that people have done like a mold mead, a mead. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Being a bit of a Viking conquester, I haven't had this before. Conquistador. Well, I that's guess Spanish. Viking. Viking that's conquistador, Spanish, yeah. Conquistador, if yeah. you will. <laughs> if you will, so to speak. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this has gotten impeccably warmer. Take a sip of it. <laughs> I'm not drinking this out of the bottle. Take a sip of the bottom. Right. Do it. Do it. 
when the cool is off of it, it tastes more medicine-y. Ooh, it's very phenolic. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, that might be the yeast at the bottom of the bottle. You're going to be shitting your brains out is what's going to happen. So it's essentially an infection brewing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my idea of getting this warmer and tasting better, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. You poured, Craig, uh, next beer. Was there a write-up for that? Is this it? All that came with it? That's it. And there's several different beers in that one bag. Uh... Okay, three three different beers, two bottles of each, so there should be six beers, yeah. We got like a like a light sour going on here. Yeah, it's a light sour. It's a light sour. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he wrote about it. I like this guy's style. This it's not like over... Couldn't tell you who it came from because there's no name on it's it. It's very good. Oh. Oh. It's very... It's refreshing. <laughs> That'll do. It, it's yeah, not, not puckery. Little pu- like, nah, not much. Like a six. Little pucker. Eh. Six on the pucker scale? I would scale? Say six on the pucker scale. And that I'd last one four. was a ten. Oh, a four. Yeah. That's almost two less than mine. Hmm. I'm going to check that math. Oh, I know who it came from. Brad it's, Jennings. Duh. It's good. Brad. From Crow and Wolf? No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, Brad, Gaines. Brad Gaines. We love you, Brad Gaines. And, and Spencer Andrews. Right, of and I need my back crack. I he's think Brad's a, getting rid of baby. He's going to have a baby soon. Oh, oh, he'd be baby. making beers and babies. Little, little brew. Oh, beers Brad. lead to babies. That babies makes sense. Beer. Beers lead to babies. I know. Making one is far more fun than making the other is all I got to say. Yeah, beers are pretty cool. So... This is from Brad Jennings. He dropped these off on my... It's funny. He actually texted me because he's local. He texted me. He's like, hey, I got these beers I want you guys to review on the show, whatever. Uh, can I swing by and drop them off? We were, If I'm not mistaken, we were on our way to the airport when he texted me and I had my wife respond, You know, type out the response. Oh my gosh, just leave them on my doorstep and I'll have somebody bring them in. I think you brought them inside. Probably Tim. did, yeah. Yeah. So anyways... That's uh, good. Yeah. So what? So what do you get? What do you get from it? You said it's light. You were describing it very well, Tim. A buzz. It's, it, yeah. It's to me, it's a sour. It's it's not overly puckery. No. It's it's a very light, very sour. Very light sour. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't nail the taste. Uh, no shocker there. There's clearly something else more than beer in this, though, right? I mean, based on the color alone, it's crystal yeah. clear. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like, it's like this almost looks like red. a glass of Kool Aid. Or yeah, 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 like orange Kool Aid. Yeah. yeah, to like a diluted iced tea. Yeah, it's not terribly carbonated. No, That's it's not very at all. flat. It's not low, flat. Low it's, acid. It's refreshing. Oh, here comes my wife. Yeah, low carbonation. Low Hi, wife. <laughs> Hi, wife. Hi, Michelle. Low carbonation, low acidity. Very refreshing. It's very good. Yeah. It's good. I like it. Yeah. We've always we've liked pretty much everything Brad's left over here. I, I would like the the carbonation kicked up maybe a degree or two. That or, would make or this, three uh, or, for sour beers. Or, I like them very. Sp- yeah, yeah. You like tarts, so do I. You and I are very much into the uh, Tim. I'm talking to Tim here. Yeah. You and I very much like the high acidity. I want to feel like the enamel's getting peeled off my teeth yeah. sometimes. Oh, yeah. See, I, I could dial that back a little bit. If this was bumped up a couple degrees, this would be perfect. Yeah. To me. But also, I do feel like the, the carbonation would, would increase the perception. I, I think the, so, too, yeah. The perception of that acidity, right? All right. Uh, but this is very good. Yeah, it's, it's I, a nice. I, it's a very well made beer. It almost tastes like a pilsner with raspberry in it. Yeah, and then raspberry. and then somebody. It's raspberry, by the way. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> But then, like somebody dropped in a couple drops of like lactic acid, but you don't. It's you barely taste the acidity. Yet. Yeah, it's just there to know. It's yeah. enough is there to know. Have you tasted it, Craig? But a lot. But here's the deal. Well, Craig will get to it when he, once he figures out how to put headphones on. Uh, those go over your ears, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Craig, yeah. get those out of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> no. Strike two. Not how they you go got a big on. nose. That's, <laughs> that's Strike not two. how they go on. Oh my god, Craig, how did you get out of elementary school? That is not how they go. Strike three. Oh my god, this is. He had to get up what to is, say hello to Michelle. What is who wishes she could actually be here. open the door for her? Oh, is it was it locked? Is that, is that yes. why my the recording oh, studio is right guys outside are of it? A special kind of dumb. Oh my god! Flip it around, <laughs> Tim. This is hilarious. Oh, and I don't even get headphones. This this half ass production here. <laughs> you give headphones to the two monkeys that don't even know how to put them on. Hey, right. right. are mine on? Yeah. They actually those look good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are actually way less complicated than these Sony's. Good color. 
So have you tasted it yet, Craig? Mm. <laughs> that mm. means no. Yeah. <laughs> Are you not sure if you've tried it? <laughs> it's soury. <laughs> <laughs> this is just uh, spun off the rails. Ooh, I like it though. Yeah, this Ooh, is it's good. It's I do very like very it. refreshing. Yeah, like it's it's a little more mild than the last sour. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, it's good. Here it's we go. Not a stout, but a little bit of carbonation or something. You yeah, we need a little Craig, more bubbles. Hey, listen, Craig wins. He said it's not a stout. Nice job, Craig. Brilliant. Meal in that glass, Craig. If you want us to hear you, you're going to have to get up on that. I'm microphone. trying. There you go. So ASMR, sorry. pal. Let me read to you what Bradley uh, told us about this. He says. It's not a stout. (laughs) (laughs) He says, I basically followed Sean Williams' recipe. Oh, that's where I recognize this from. Sean's. I don't... I I hate to say this. I don't know who that is. Uh, Seriously, you don't know who Sean is? Is that Alexa? Yeah. (laughs) Alexa is... Is she she telling us who Sean is? She's telling us who Sean is. (laughs) Yeah, she's like, guys... Sean's a patron. She's smart. It's so loud. Is going Why on? is it so loud? Uh, Alexa well, just enabled the self-destruction whatever, yeah. sequence. Yeah, everyone listening is like, we don't hear it. Shut up about Alexa. So he says, I basically followed Sean Williams' recipe from May 10th, 2021 edition of Hazy and Hoppy. Mm. I don't know what that is either. I feel like I should know what that is. You should. It's weird because it's kind of like almost your show. Aren't you the beer manager? Yeah. <laughs> I, one, we don't have a Sean Williams. Two, we don't have a Hazy and Hoppy. I have no idea what either of those are. God, Anyways. I hope with every fiber in my being, he meant to send this into a different podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong address. <laughs> Wrong address, foo. That would Return be, the sender. That would be funny, except for he dropped them off on my doorstep. I, I saw him on my ring, oh. on my ring app. Just then the neighbor is waving like, yeah. no, wrong no, house, wrong Sh- house. No, I'm Sean. Yeah. I'm Hazy and Hoppy over here. Hey, by the way, we got paid $200 this month to advertise Hazy and Hoppy, whoever that is. Brewing process manager at Anheuser Busch. That's awesome. I bet my, my guess is that there's a podcast called Hazy and Hoppy. Uh, he was canceled. And he was on. He was canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it says Hazy and Hoppy. Is it? Yeah. Does he host it? Sure. Is he the host? Yeah. Wait. Uh, hey, Sean. We should buy them. Know, we, we need some sponsors. Them. We, we need gotta, some sponsors. We gotta yeah. cut them out. Yeah. I know. Not Hostile takeover. We were almost canceled once, but we won't get into that. Uh, was, he, was it a comment Craig made? <laughs> it was a joke that I made. Oh. Uh, huh. We weren't. We weren't really. I was just joking. But uh, so Bradley says he used six pounds. That's a Damn. lot, dude. For a five-gallon batch, I'm assuming of frozen raspberries. Vice puree and no oak chips. Cocaine. And he added four ounces of lactose. Lactose is just milk sugar. Okay. It's, it, yeah. Brad Brad Gaines uses a lot of lactose at Crone Wolf. And Tim, I swear to God, that was not my dog, is all I'm gonna say. Uh he also added four ounces of lactose at the end. Very interesting beer. You can tell we're getting a little buzzed here. I don't know about you guys. I am, yeah. Yeah. I'm so not. let's open the next one. <laughs> let's do it. On to the next one. What, so, but I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. It was it was okay. Yeah, it, I it, I wish it was like a little bit more puffy or maybe one. carbonated or something. If it had either but of the those, the taste was amazing. It was, the taste was phenomenal. It's yeah. clean. That, but, that but was a had, good good. If beer. it had either of those, Tim, if it had more carbonation or more acidity, it would have made it more pleasurable. Yeah, but if it had both of those, oh, it would have it would have kicked changer. it up. It would have kicked it up, for knocked me. it out of the yeah. park. Yeah. yeah, good so, overall. But it, yeah, it was it was deli- the flavor was delicious. So the first beer I ever had from Brad. Hey, don't knock your microphone over, Tim. I know it's weird. That that I'm gonna get you guys better mic stands. Here, Timmy, take or Craig, take that. Yes, sir. So, uh, what does the label say? You didn't read it because you're a good boy. But what, what does the label say on that one? I, we didn't read it. It says Comp IPA. Jennings. Comp IPA. Jennings. It said something about Sean, guy. but none of us seem to know who it. Sean is. I got it. I got it. Sean? Something about Sean? Williams? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, he's from ABM Bev. 7.5. That's clear. It's, yeah, Brad, I'm pretty sure he uh, bottles off the keg. So these Mine's crystal clear. As opposed Super to bright. bottle off of what? Bottle condition. I like uh, the color. We talked about that in yeah. Saison like five months ago. Remember that? 
Yeah. It was oh, it's so been, long ago. So long. Like eight years ago? Yeah. yeah, it might as well have been 1952. Yeah. Should we let the so, so them in? Uh, uh, no. We're not going to tell anybody Don't. that we... Our did, secrets are our secrets. The Saison. The Saison secrets. 20 mm. minutes before we Don't. did this. But oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah, It's good. It, is it good? Yeah, I like it. You weren't supposed to... God dang it. Smell, mouthfeel, aroma. Aroma being first. I did all that while you were talking. <laughs> Smell and aroma are the same thing, Justin. They're not. <laughs> Please tell me about the aroma, the mouthfeel, and the smell. Please. <laughs> I got nothing on the smell. That's a, oh, I get I, I get I get a lot I get a lot of the aroma, nothing on the smell. I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, I get a lot of smell, very little aroma yeah, though. I love the way it aromas. Okay, so I have a dumb question. Again, why, good. <laughs> why are these beer, beers not have a lot of lace? Oh my god. Why do we let him in? I'm being serious. It's because I put my glasses in the dishwasher. In the dishwasher. We're supposed to sound professional like we care, Craig. And you're over here giving my secrets away. You're over here making me look like a fool because I want, because everybody hates the fact that a craft beer guy like me doesn't wash their glasses with salt. Wait, what the hell do you wash your glasses with then? The dishwasher. Oh no. my God. Sinkers revealed. I got a mouth full of dawn and a belly full of anger. We use the one that starts with a C, but I forget what it's called. Calgon? What? Cascade? <laughs> Calgon, take me away. <laughs> he puts them in the bathtub with him. I was use Cascade? I was going to say Cascade. <laughs> I was going to say Crest. Well, the but, uh, yeah. That's toothpaste. Well, here's the deal. If you've ever used a loofah, you know you'll never go back. They're right? awesome. They're awesome, yeah. Uh, it, no, it, a part of it is the higher the alcohol, the more the, the it has an impact on the okay. foam. All it's right. the foam that sticks to the glass. We've had... We're using the same glasses. We'll give that away. Mm. We're barely rinsing them with water before we go. Okay. We've had sour beers. We've had... Uh, stouts, stout, uh, imperial stouts, all that stuff. So, if we had taken these, I do wash my glasses. I well like this in the dishwasher, but uh, I do, uh, you know. And Is that a dumb question? It's not. A, it was. I was trying to make you feel like a dumbass. Thank you. Which you don't need me to do that for you. But <laughs> <laughs> look, I don't need help looking like an a hole. <laughs> I'm very capable of doing it on my own. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What do you guys I, think I, of this? I one? do like it. I like it. I love the way it smells. I got, it's very I got, basic. It's very ba- it's a ba- it's like old school IPA yes. is what I smell. Yeah, yeah. Very Sam Adamsy. It's not. Yeah, it's not crazy bitter. Oh, it's I, good. I, I it's like good. It. It's, it's a good very, beer. It's crisp. So yeah. Mm. Oh, he calls it a simple IPA. See. Duh. Simple. Okay. Simple. Okay. Here we go. So so he calls it double yay. Which I think is a cool name. Double, like, yay. He says it's a simple IPA with Magnum hops for bittering and HBC 1019 hops from the March discount, which means he's a patron, which I know you are, Bradley, and I appreciate you so much. Uh, so pat- patrons have, get a usually a pretty steep discount on YVH hops or merch or whatever. As they is. should, because Patreons put up. That's right. Yeah. And we put I down. love Patreons. They're patrons, dork. I love Patreons. Yeah. That means more than one patron. Oh, plural. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, it's plural. Yeah. So he's one of our Patreons. I, it's wait, good. wait is like it Patrons it. or Patreons? They're Patrons. Because I just said Patreons and I'm you just, just said Patreons. Because I respect you, Justin. That's fair. Yeah. It's wise. I'm, I'm hearing the same thing. Yeah, okay, thank you. So he's a Patreon patron. He's a Patriot patron. Who got a discount, a steep discount, if Boom. you Boom. On HBC 1019 hops. That's what I tasted. Describe it. Describe it. Describe what? The hops. The hops? They are springy. They are very (laughs) flavorful. A little bit of bread. A little bread from the hops. Yeah. A little danky. It's like danky bread you left in a back alley. Sourdough. You ain't wrong. wrong. It's not like it's bread that's angry, but it's bread that's seen some things. Is it a little Mm -hmm. sour? Mm. It's a little sweet. Sour dough. Sour dough. No, but he makes dough. And he yells, holla, we live in squala. I have an idea. Holla dough. I have an idea. Justin's eyes are very glossy. (laughs) Yeah, they're so glossy. I could feel it. You know what he said to me during our last break? 
When my wife comes to pick me up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell her I was drinking. <laughs> Don't. I, I was here. I won't have to. Yeah. We, we were here just talking <laughs> the entire we day. We were having a heart to heart of Bible study. Yeah. yeah. You know what's interesting? His eyes are getting smaller and his his hey. pipe head's getting taller. Hey, you talk a lot of shit for having to wear glasses inside, okay? I have no hair. I don't care. You and your light eyes. He does have some of the light. You and Roscoe are like, my son Roscoe, you guys are competing for the lightest eyes of yeah. people I know. Because we're awesome. Uh, go ahead and pour us uh, Bradley's last one, his third one. Uh, that I thought this was really good. It was very I, basic. Yeah, it was simple, but it was... It was. It had everything that I expect from a nice, simple, old school IPA, and I thought it was really yeah. good. I forget what HBC one zero one nine is supposed to taste like. I forget what that is, but I think he nailed it. He done did it good. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have two of these bottles? Just. Um, what's, what the caps say? Yeah. Here we go. Here you go, Timmy. Yeah. Here you go. No, I'll give them their fresh bottle. Is it the last beer in there? Are we done? Fresh. Yes. This Here. is called The Return of the Mac. I, I Ain't Your Beer, Ooh, that's a good song. <laughs> I Ain't Your Beer, bitch. Return Winch. This oh. is a family show. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. No, obviously, by the way that you've treated it. He calls Bunch it of, Hazy Mac. Bunch of miscreants. And by the way, Craig, it's your favorite oh, style of beer. Hazy. It's hazy. Free. It's hazy, but it's not murky. Damn. Gee. Yeah. No, you're oh, right. It's only right. 5.8. That's normal for oh, Hazy. Oh, that's Mel's IPA. Mm. That's IPA. If you spell mm. it out. If you spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, that's delicious. This smells so good. I haven't ah, tasted so it yet. So good. Yeah. yeah. I want to hear what you like about it, Craig, because you you love hazy IPA. This, by well, the way, can I tell a little story? Yes, please. When yeah. I first met Craig ten years ago, now something like that. That's almost a decade. He knew that I brewed beer. <laughs> 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 okay. He knew. Okay. He knew that I brew beer, and so he was. You know, you're trying to be cool. You're, tr- you know, not cool, but like in my I head, am. you were trying to be cool. Yeah. So, but like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, what do you have? Do you have? You know, I love you know porter, stout, whatever. And you did, and what? And you and I kind of connected on the whole dark beer thing. And if I'm being honest with you, is because I was like, if I do this, he won't talk to me about beer anymore. That's what I thought in the original, right? But. I hope you don't feel bad about that. No. That's just what I think most brewers can relate with that. You're like, I, shut, I get the, shut up. it's not, it's not a shut the fuck up thing. It's a, it is a, it is a, I understand that you heard I make beer and you're trying to connect with and me you're trying to connect, level. but I'll connect with you on a different level. Like I, I get that, but it sounds kind of pretentious, Craig. Would you, would you, would you say, that? yeah, well, no, I, you know, I was being presumptive. I, that, that's a bad thing on my part. Yeah. I admit, I'm admitting this. That's why I'm talking about this on the show. You out of nowhere started drinking hazy IPA, which people argued nonstop when this style was blowing up, and we, and all of us old school guys are like, ugh, it looks like they're just doing cheap, you know, not doing the right process, whatever it is. And I hear you saying, "Oh my God, have you tried this? this is so good." Whether it's it was, uh, you know, I've got a hazy. We'll, we'll drink it after the show, after we're done recording. I've got one of the. Firestone Walker hazies. I've got all because it came in the twelve pack, and I don't drink them. <laughs> that's why. That's why. But but and I saved it for you, Craig. But you started texting me about this, and I was like, "Wow, he he is actually getting into this." Oh yeah, he likes them, yeah, right? Like, and and yeah, you, totally. Tim. I mean, we go we camp together all, and mm-hmm. he's constantly bringing these hazy IPAs everywhere. Yeah. I was like, "This is what this is what it is. This is how people get the bite, get bit, right?" And it sticks. And the fact that that you that Hazy IPA did that for you reminded me, dead serious. This is why we don't judge stuff. This is why we just let it go because you are now a craft beer lover because of that style. Absolutely. And so I'm trying to get Tim into it with these Hazy IPAs, and I'm like, here, try this. It's so fruity, and he's like, mm, this isn't bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Tim and I are on the sour train, though. <clears throat> this one actually isn't. It's pretty good. It's juicy. It won't adjust down even further. <laughs> I know. Somehow your <laughs> mic is like at, pointed at your forehead right yeah. now. 
I don't okay. know. I do have a big forehead. It this smells really good. It, 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 smells, it is very good. Yes. The aroma on this is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. It's juicy. Uh, Dude, this is textbook. Very absolutely textbook and hazy IPA. That's what IPA. I like. I like the juiciness. That's what I love about the hazy IPAs is the juiciness. But I feel like the thing that that and I I actually beat myself up for this. I get something out of this style that you guys aren't picking up. And to me it's this weird chalky like it makes my teeth squeaky. I don't like it. I just, it's, it's, I'll drink it. I'm going to drink this whole thing. We'll finish that bottle. I would tell Brad, if, if Bradley was here right now, I'd tell him, good job. You made a great hazy IPA. I agree with you guys. It's a great version, example of the style, right? It is not something I would order another pint of. But it do just you feel does. that in all of them or just this one? <sighs> so I was at Crone Wolf two, three months ago. And Brad Gaines, the head brewer there, right. we all know Brad, friend of ours, he came up to me and he said, Marshall, you got to try this beer. It's a, it's a little hazy because it's fresh off the tank. I said, yeah, no problem. So we're back in the brewery. We're not in the, we're not in the tap room. Back in the brewery. So you got to try this beer. So he gives it to me. I taste it. I said, yeah. He goes, what does it taste like? I said, it tastes, it tastes like pineapple to me. He's like, that's exactly what I get. That's what we were going for. You know, and he's like, would you, would you order a pint of that? I say, yeah, sure, I'd order a pint of it. Because in my head, I'm thinking it'll clear up over time. And he goes, that's our next hazy. It's never going to clear up, dude. Uh-huh. He's like, I just poured that off the tap. <laughs> He's like, you know, whatever. He's like joking with me to try to get me, to prove to me. But so it's, I, I don't know if it's a mind thing or not. Like I'm a psychologist. I get that we're biased, that we have, I have nothing against the haziness of it. I don't care. But when I drink this, it doesn't taste, you know, we had a Pliny the Elder last night, right? We're very fortunate where we oh, live. Oh, those are gross. <laughs> you don't oh, like it for real? No, oh. not at all. And everybody, oh, really? has, like, everybody has such a hard on for Go. those. Yeah, everybody. I love oh, it. Oh, my I God. I'm going to have a Pliny the Elder. <laughs> so good. I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. And Tim it. liked it. Yeah, he, yeah. Dra- he drank. He split yeah. a half a freaking bomber with me last night. But I drink that and I get this crisp, fresh hop character. With normal beer flavor underneath it, this I get. It, this this is a compliment, by the way. This tastes like the hazies that I get mm-hmm. from really good breweries. This is very good. Yeah, uh, it, there's something to it that just doesn't sit with me. That I, I and I don't know what it is. And I I hope honestly, I hope that it's just bias. That it's just me seeing that it's hazy. But I don't think that's what it is. I I, I perceive something different about it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so when we were in Felton, you and I went to Humble C, Tim's T-shirt. They had some good hazy beers that you and I drank. I tried every one. I tried every one that you I ordered. I thought they were good. Yeah, They were good. They they're, were good. they're very yeah. good hazy IPAs. Would I ever order? That, that's what I'm saying. I understand that this is a style that people love, and I'm happy to admit that is a very good version of that. And this is a top it's not he dropped this off two months ago i'll be honest yeah with you. that's a yeah, textbook example it is, of how it it's should be it's not dark it's not purple it's not oxidized it's beautifully carbonated it's yellow it's it's gorgeous it's barely hazy right so it's not murky which that is not a good hazy ipa it he did everything right it tastes just like a commercial hazy ipa it's just not something that i would order again yeah, and you would, and yeah, and, and I love totally, that, yeah. and I love that, and that's why I think it deserves to be around. You yeah, know, it's, it's absolutely. A, there are people out there who will say, "Oh, this is an abomination." You know, learn how to brew properly or whatever. It they're is. idiots. No, they're idiots. Yeah, and and that that's not what I'm saying. Thank you for letting my dog into the studio while we're recording, but it's all good. It's all good. It's, yeah, it's a circus. Yeah, he is here. a cutie. He wants. Yeah, some so beer. like, I don't like the. I mean. Restart that. I don't love the hazy IPA scene. Yeah. IPAs for me are kind of meh, whatever. I love the Pilsners. I love the Lagers. Whether, and I, I love ales. This is this is a great example of what that beer should be. Yeah. And, and again, it's one of those that, yeah, I'll have it. I'll be thankful for it. Would I do it again? No. Probably not. Yes. Whatever. Whatever. I, I will say this, and I know you. I know you. You want to say some some more about it, but whatever hops he used in this, he calls it hazy mac. He says it's a simple hazy recipe using only Mackenzie hops, which he got from the January discount. So nice. Mackenzie hops are a new hop, a newish hop variety that they are uh, 
I believe they were they were bred and developed in Yakima Valley. This is the hop character on this is money. Oh, I love the flavor. It's what do you get? How would you describe? So I get a very particular uh, fruity character. Yeah, I get fruity. Um, tropical. You get tropical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get stone fruit. I get like peach. Yeah, I get Hawaiian peaches. <laughs> That's tropical, right? <laughs> yeah, wow, tropical. <laughs> very tropical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I just I get that when I say tropical, I just I think of crisp, refreshing. Uh, Absolutely, it, it's it's a good beer. It's just not one of those where, like, it's just not one I want a bunch of. Yeah, and I'm that's just me. On that. Yeah. I do. I yeah. like it. It's my flavor. Yeah. And dude, this is this is Did a we, Hazy Craig. We're gonna I, actually, I just get the bitter aftertaste and mm. You get bitter on this? We're yeah. going to change the name oh, to Hazy this Craig. Is, this is so far hazy Craig. So far from bitter for, for me. This is Yeah, I don't not get bitter. bitter. Yeah. Yeah. I get soft. I get that fluffy mm-hmm. or or as or you know, Brian used to describe it as a uh, a cloudy or like a a cloudy mouthfeel where it's like I that's what I get from this. I I think Brad nailed it. I think he nailed it. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Thank t- you, Brad. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Brad. Well, thank you, way Marshall. to crush it. Thank you, Justin. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me into this little world that is free well, beer. We didn't let you in. You've kind of forced yourself in. But <laughs> hey, that's what I do. That's what I do when <laughs> I do when I do, I do. When I do's it. <laughs> do you guys have anything else you'd like to say before we wrap this up or what? We need more. Yeah, I, just is, want to, I just want to thank everybody for these amazing beers. You, yeah. right? you guys are just killing it, and it's a it's an honor to taste them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, just so cool that people take the time and the expense. I mean, let's just be real. We had a guy from Japan. That's crazy. Take the time, yeah, yeah. the expense, and the effort. Yeah, to send cool. us some beers. That's friggin' awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I will say this: that that if the, you know there are indicators that that we have done something good for the brewing world and the fact that people are willing to send us this crap oh my god <laughs> send us this these beers to hear our crap <laughs> is what i meant to say we've had a few beers today yeah. to send us these beers to hear our crappy reviews of them is what i meant to say that 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 says something to me and i yeah. really appreciate that as well craig is the same way you were saying is it, it's so much fun. You know, we sit here and we, we, we just bullshit for the whole time yeah. about beers, which everybody does. Every brewer does that with their homies every night, you know, or every weekend or whatever it is. And we get to do it on air and have fun with it. And you guys listen to it. And that really means a lot to us. I, I you know, I don't a thousand percent. Yeah. Know, this is such a cool yeah. privilege. Yeah. And, and, and unlike Marshall, I feel like the three of us are trailblazers <laughs> in the home brew yeah. world. I mean, <laughs> We are bridging the gap between the haves and the have-nots, between <laughs> the brewers and the non-brewers. The haves and the have mores maybe? Yeah. yeah. Justin, you're right. The, the, the knowledge that we've given to Marshall, I see him grow, and Dude, it's amazing. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like we're like yeah. a third-grade yeah. teacher. I, I, we're like, hey, I'm a proud parent. spread your wings, little one. <laughs> yeah. proud parent. Fly. Fly. Do your thing. I'm getting a little tear in my eye. Yeah. Think about how that. much Marshall's grown since the three of us have been yes. involved. I know. God, it feels good. Yeah. Well, you should be me. It really feels good. I bet it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask you to rethink through that statement. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end it. It is summer here in the Central Valley, so I think we're going to go out, hop in the pool, probably throw some meat on the grill, do our thing, drink some Miller Lights. I don't know about you, but I am pining for some crisp, fine Pilsner. Uh, that was a very that was a very fun time. I love you guys. You know that. I appreciate you guys uh being here to review the beers that the more important people, no offense, sent into us. And I can't believe, again, just to point it out, that all these people are sending beers to us. If you want to have your beer reviewed on this show, you can email feedback at brewlosophy.com and we'll be sure to reach out to you to let you know how to hook that up so that uh, we get those beers in. Just don't expect them to be reviewed right away. You know, <laughs> we, we have to work around our schedules. So uh, don't forget to subscribe to The Brew Lab where host Kate Job takes you into the lab with brewing professionals to discuss the important and fascinating work they've done and make sure to follow everything we're up to at Brew Lab philosophy.com.
The Brewlosophy Podcast is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors as well as all of our rad listeners. We seriously could not do this without you. Cheers to everyone who has subscribed and left a review of our show. It makes a huge difference. If you haven't yet, please consider doing so. Head over to brewlosophy.com slash support to view a list of ways you can easily help us to continue producing this podcast. If you want a reward for your support, visit patreon.com slash brewlosophy. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Brewlosophy Podcast. Until then, think beer. Start off the morning with some hot tea, lemon and honey, cause it suits my bro. Put some herb in the bowl, yeah, it's homegrown. Ain't gotta go through the middle man no more.